it's time holy sh bro i left at the right time hey look as somebody who was almost on that team almost part of it i think i made a right the, the right decision If you really want to win this series, instead of blaming Pix, let's talk about what we can fix. And even if you do think Pix are problematic, you can fade in a much more productive way. Yeah, I say fucking Pix problem. Mm -hmm. They just fucking, I just play fucking normal game. We did voice chat with some random guys. <laughs> I just play normal game with voice chat with some random guys. So for people that want the context here, if you, if you if you remember, this was when everything was just dog shit at the, at the end, and he was playing with like arc second jungle. Like they were literally just hiring hiring motherfuckers off the street, auto filling them, and having them play in regional qualifiers. That's how boom this team was. Why? They just after all the game, they just do nothing. Oh, I do this, I do this. They just dodge them any plan. They just fucking just shut. They don't know what to do. They just shut down. If they don't know what to do, then we can help them in game. Wait, how I f***ing say by men? I think saying something simple like, yo guys, um, I want to get side lane priority. Can you help? Can you push anything is a very good place to get back in and win a new team fight. And it's Liquid just sort of playing like it's John solo queue saying, hey. We practice really hard before whole split, but in LCA state, I just feel like everyone just want to lose and go home <laughs> fast. Uh, just lose and go home fast. Perfect. D Lim, Fabby, bro. Fabby was my boy. For some reason, Fabby and I on site. It was literally on site with me and Fabby at the TL apartments. No matter when I saw him, me and him would just scrap it out. It was on site with me and this motherfucker. I would just, I'll be like putting this guy in a fucking headlock. We would just be like crapping all over the, the fucking floor. He would just attack me on site, bro. Me and Fabi just, we had to do it. Bro, it was on site. I mean, it just is what it is. Surprisingly, in the last four years, we had never done a boot camp in Korea. So they went mm -hmm. there and I had Loco spearhead the initiative. So, so they Hold on. Surprisingly, in the last four years, we had never done a boot camp in Korea. So this is the downstairs. This was Piglet's room. On the other side was Quas's room. That's like where he in like had the blow up. There was a so bathroom right here. Went. You go up the stairs and then to the left of this, to the left of this was my room. Uh, my room with Peter Zhang was right here. There and I had Loco. And this is the in between the apartments, 316 and 315. Um, at the time they obviously moved since then they have like much nicer apartments now this was kind of in the hood <laughs> like it, it was like a nice apartment complex but it was just like right next to um a, like a veterans place like a vet i don't know if it's a veterans hospital but it was like a veterans place and there was just homeless people all over you remember the old tl apartments look you remember this yeah that was the, the old tl apartments we, we were in the struggle back then it was it was different but yeah 316 was the academy apartment three 315 was the lcs apartment your head the initiative and put together where the boot camp would be at what teams are going to scrim and what hotel would we stay at what would the food situation be unfortunately i wasn't able to fly to korea we were working on a very large partnership deal for team liquid that would have sizable impact on what 2017 would look like for the company and that took priority over the boot camp it was the first time where we did a boot camp where I wasn't close by with the team. Mistake number one. So I started to hear some of these problems and I tried to fix them remotely and it just kind of wasn't working. Honestly, the Korea trip was a pretty big failure before we even arrived. Everyone was let down, but especially I was let down. So then that made me frustrated and then eventually my frustration just kind of led to a blow up. No, like you're playing it where you're just going so through the So the main problem, the time instead of trying to win or the main problem here was that the place was too fucking small. Like everyone else, like, do you remember what um, TSM's boot camp place looked like? It was like a nice fucking room. Everyone had their own rooms. It was a big area where they were practicing in. And TL was cheap as fuck. And they had them in the fucking like corner, bro. This was a box. They put all these motherfuckers in a box when they already fucking didn't like each other. And then blew up like this was tl being fucking cheap and giving them a boot camp when they were expecting something else like if i could find videos of tsm legends around that time and i'll show you what they were practicing this is what tl had like there's no talking about what we should do afterwards there's no talking about 
how we're gonna win mid game. There's no talking about how we're gonna team fight. Like you're just jungling. Yeah, yeah it's my job. job. I'm a jungler. I'm a jungler. It's so effortless. Like you're Love not that. shot calling. Shot calling also part of your job. Like talking to your teammates. That's also part of your job. What was going to be a really productive boot camp and preparing during the off season between the two splits ended up turning into a complete behavioral disaster. There was a few blow ups between the players and Loco that had went so far that it was almost not repairable. Follow the pride, because I know you really, really want to f***ing win. Like, there's time for it. I mean, there's no pride. I already said, yeah, I, I made the mistake. It won't happen again. I don't know <laughs> what else you want me to say. There's no pride. Well, you want me to get in my time machine f***ing and go back before the script started him. and play differently? This like mother no, it's just how we deal with <laughs> Hell problems. No. When I made a mistake no pride. regarding pick and ban, I apologize and say, like, I'm sorry, like, and then we try to move on instead, like... I literally... We went over the mistake, I saw that I was wrong, and I said, okay. Yeah, you guys, you guys, why you come here? You guys want practice, then you guys come here, right? So just f***ing practice, focus, practice, while fucking trolling. Even Joshi, you die, we still focus four people, but you always going there. And you always say, send me, you, you want f***ing win summer split, then you should focus game. Yeah, maybe not anymore. Okay, then just to don't practice. Okay. Most of these players, when they play in the West, oh, they just Thorin. play against the best team in their region. What they do is they play all the teams in the LCS. And they maybe sometimes when they can't get practice against LCS, they might play the odd challenger team in scrims. And so unfortunately, they are used to, first of all, having a decent win rate. Even a team who's like fifth or sixth in LCS, like Team Liquid, might be able to, in scrims, have a 60, 70% win rate. Maybe they win a pretty decent amount. If they go to Korea, the first week they get there, they're Higher. gonna lose most of their. When scripts. I was on if teams, the best teams. When I was on teams in this era, like TL and C and, and uh, Curse, we were always a really fucking insane scrim team. That's why people would hype us up. Like we would normally win like seventy to like ninety percent of our scrims throughout a week. And even when we played against like teams that ended up winning, like even if we were playing against like TSM, CLG, C9, we would have really high win rate until the end of the split. Then they would start picking up. But generally in scrims, we were like always an insane team so like most of the players like piglet and phoenix they're used to winning like they're used to winning 80 percent of their scrims like that was just standard destroyed where they have almost no chance to win so that in itself destroys their confidence and unfortunately especially younger players makes them think like oh not only am i not going to win now but how could i ever win playing these teammates something has to be done right now we have to fix it all and even worse the secondary aspect is when they are playing in the west and things go badly they can still keep telling themselves you know what there's a lot we can still improve as we keep playing more tournaments we'll get better remember last split was the first split for these rookies now when you go to korea you feel like okay right no excuses we're playing the best team in the world this is our best chance to get as good as we can get now we're going to see what the ideal scenario is then when you lose it feels like well what else can we do i mean there's no there's no like we can't go to the moon and play versus martians to get better like we just played the best players we're in, in the ideal practice scenario and we're doing even worse and we're doing really badly and all our problems are very apparent that's going to come to an extreme head when you're in this scenario of a korean boot camp so that's why i think if you look in the past the teams that have gone to korean boot camps who weren't really cohesive units and didn't have a very clear coaching philosophy and didn't have the our players and the role players in the right harmony in the right balance they're the teams that get worse from the korean boot camp because it just adds more pressure and unfortunately rips up your rips you apart at the seams from the few elements that were holding you together facts i think i played i played in one korean boot camp i played in one korean boot camp in season two and at this time like at the time that we went we were we were literally one of the best teams in the west we were it was dignitas season two we placed second in i am hanover which means we only lost to the best. We beat all the other NA teams. We only lost to the best European team, which was Moscow 5 at that point. And when we went to Korea, we thought we were just going to be like fine. And we were losing to Zenic Storm, which was like a, like a top four team. We were losing to their second team with players that I had never heard of before in my life. That's how it was. It was actually that different. I think Josh is definitely an interesting personality I have on any team. <laughs> like say loco josh or piglet because uh, all three of those personalities are pretty similar they want to voice their opinions like they all just get mad at each other and <laughs> having a lot of big personalities on a team it can just lead to a lot of conflict okay so you see like their whole boot camp here just i want you guys to quickly look at this this is 2016 same time all right this is the same time right here right same time 
this is TSM's boot camp. So like this was um, like in May, this is in between splits. Look at TSM's boot camp. Here and there's um, like breakfast food all the way down, but we don't wake up it. after like, I knew that here, but this is the pool. They got like we haven't nice used it yet, pool. but it's pretty. All right, okay. Let's look at the apartments. This is where Spencer and Double If, Lena and Andy sleeps. And uh, it's mostly only really used for sleeping. Wait, and I think wait Andy, what did he say? But this is where Svenskeren, Double If, Lena, and Andy sleep. Wait, Double Lift, Lena, Andy, and Svenskeren were sleeping there. Okay, respect, honestly, dude. Double Lift got in early. I didn't know 2016 he was already making moves. Respect. And uh, it's mostly only really used for sleeping, and I think Andy uses it for work, but um, this is Svenskeren's room. He's isolated from everyone else because he snores the loudest, and no one else can share a room with him, so I guess that works as an advantage because he gets his own room. Uh, this is a... Uh, laundry room i think okay we'll yeah. just skip through uh, um this is, this is like i think andy's working area look at this bro look at this okay so just just think about this we're, we don't have to watch the whole thing but i just want you guys to get an idea of like why the players were so pissed off they're like seeing tsm's videos they're like oh look this is where we are look at like the practice area they're gonna go show the practice area look at the shitty room tl is in and then look at this practice area did you win dennis i lost you lost? lost that's because you didn't like that's because you didn't play with me so this is what tl players were looking at they're like come on motherfuckers like really tsm got that shit and we're we're here this is where we are being better than other players in the game doesn't give people right to like act like babies on sh or sh on their people and that's not just for you, like that's for me and that's for Joshua, that's even for Phoenix too. I'm sure like on FKT, like Baker probably has favoritism from Goma and other people feel that way about me and you. And I still want to have like continuously good relationship with you, but I want it to be like a fair relationship between you and me and me and other people too. I think you should be more revered and you should have more say, but for that to happen, your play has to always be top notch, which you've been good with but your own mentality and your behavior towards things outside of the game also have to be good. Do you agree with the things said? Maybe. <laughs> oh, this motherfucker, bro! I was gonna lose my mind playing with him. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Just roll it, just roll it. Exactly. This is gonna take five hours to watch if I keep on pausing. Just, just fucking roll it. I can't. Best answer I'm gonna get out of Josh. Woo! The way you treat us and the way you treat Piglet is completely different. Okay, if you feel and that way, true. I'll try to make it's sure it's fair as possible. True. There are facts on the table and everyone feels the same way about okay, it. True. If you feel that way, then... Dardock spinning facts here, by the way. This is how it was when I was on the team, too. Because Loco was our coach for, like, the first three months. And it was like, bro, I don't give a fuck. Like, how, how are you... Okay, Piglet is literally soft inting scrims if I don't gank bot every game. How are you okay with this as a coach, Loco? Like, I was losing my mind. And I'll try to change it, but it's not that way. Whatever, dude. Okay. I mean, as you said, like, we're going to have different relationship with me and him and, like, me and you and... Yeah, and you're going to treat him like a baby that he is and you're going to be hard on me because, yeah, I'm not, I'm not actual nuts. I'm working hard to improve the things that I'm bad at. Oh, like a baby like he is. Holy yeah, shit. That was a bit emotionally charged. <laughs> Historically, people has been the same thing the whole time. True. So historically, the reason why he's saying historically is because this was a problem with NTL for the whole year that I played with him. So coming into the team, Dardock knew that this was a thing. Like this was, so, this is such facts. This is how he was the whole time. You're going to treat him like the baby he is and you're going to be hard on me. Yes, bro. Yes. He's actually spitting facts right here. Historically, people has been the same thing the whole time, no? I mean, has Piglet improved? Yeah. He's I mean, improved. Yeah, he's he's improved. improved. No, number one, none of these motherfuckers know actually because these this was literally like the, Matt, Dardock, and and uh, Zig were all on the academy team. So they don't actually like know what he was like in season five. So it's like, yeah, I guess he improved from season five to season six from what I heard. Like, and then from my experience when I was within the team for the first like three months, but like he didn't really like, I mean, it was still the same shit. Like maybe he wouldn't like say the, the, the hurtful shit to his teammates like he wouldn't make his teammates cry the way he made a special cry but he wasn't a good teammate he would still shut down if things didn't if like the game didn't go the way he played or he wanted it to go if the game was like bad for him at any point he's not talking for the rest of the game yeah but like 
the root problem is still there, as you call them, root problems. And those don't seem to be going away anymore. I don't think he's improved Facts. that much, though. Like, he spent an entire game not talking. That's yeah, pretty that, classic. Yep. Really? That's pretty classic. Exactly. Everyone Holy shit. Wait, we should have done this earlier, bro. Was I should have done this different. the second that I... Oh, no, he I, was just um, lazy. Like, we all went there, and it's a boot camp, and that means we're going to play all day. We're going to try super hard and get yeah, ready for know. the next split and try to win it because we were all, like, super let down from getting fourth. When we arrived, like, Piglet only played the game during scrim hours, and then, like, after scrim hours, he was out, like, look, like with his girlfriend, with his friends and stuff, and, like, he was out every night, like, drinking with, like, Impact and Reaper and his Korean friends that were there, too. So it was, like, really awful work ethic that we're not used to seeing Piglet have, and it just it frustrated me a lot because I'm sitting there playing like 18 hours a day with a wrist injury, just like killing <laughs> killing my wrist, and then I got some dude just like jerking off. Okay. I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still try hard. Okay, right, so from my definition of try hard, try hard is both <laughs> in play and also in terms of how you guys talk. So I don't think you're trying hard when you're not talking, and I don't think Josh is trying hard when Josh is being passive. How, how I can talk like you? Okay, let me finish and then we can go over. What do you mean? How can you talk? He always did the sh How can I talk? Like, if my teammates don't know, bro, if he doesn't know what he's fucking up on as 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 a fucking support player, like, how? what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to play the game for him? He's like, no, bro, you just say, like, a couple, like, core things that are going to shape the way he plays. So, like, if the dynamic of the lane changes and you suddenly have to play different, you just say what the fuck you need to do, even if you are the better player. The Piglet would not do that. Like, if he, if he knew that an actual lane dynamic had changed and like suddenly they shouldn't trade or like the enemy juggler is like bot side for a period of time like he would just like let the other guy play and if the other guy ints he would like almost want them to int so that he could show how fucking bad they were in the review it's like look look at my support bro he doesn't know he doesn't know yeah i could tell him but like he doesn't know isn't that the problem like it was i'm kind of can't i'm gonna lose my mind by the end of this this is like the little details of it like there's time for Josh is actually like really helpful to you and then he's like yo yo pick up you need to talk like what do you need bottom and then there's time for Josh is like this is fucking 4v5 like there's no point to play this game like why are we fucking playing this can we just pause here like so whenever Josh is like being emo or Josh is being aggressive or passive aggressive I can be like yo Josh what the fuck are you doing like why are you being passive aggressive this isn't helpful like I can try to be more understanding of like why he's having those problems and help him with those problems. Mamba mentality, Giga Chat. And then trip. like you to Matt, like when Matt is having problems, you're like, I can't fucking play. Like my support, like. Oh my know god, he's literally me. saying it, bro. Oh my god, I haven't watched this. I should just let it run because like, instead, this was can, exactly like, what it was. We can with me. tell Matt how to play it better, and then we can be like supportive of him. I'm still playing and I'm still trying my best. And Holy shit, it's so accurate. Well, but... Yeah, I can't lie, but this feels like a waste of my time. It's a waste of everyone's time. If we're not going to try super hard as five and only, if only some of us are trying. What do you need to Piglet to say? I mean, with the words, like he doesn't say a word all game. It's like, <laughs> like, 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 so true. Words, maybe like, an incomplete sentence the whole game. I think like Phoenix Fam and Matt over R weren't that problematic. And with Piglet, I spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and we talked about why he shouldn't do certain stuff and how, how he should behave in certain ways. But he had his expectations set, and Look. there was no way of really going about it. Piglet is pretty lonely in America. Holy sh**, based Yuna. That's the homie right there. So, look, what I would say is during this, everyone thinks that Dardot came off really bad. I forget exactly what makes people have such a bad, like, taste in their mouth when Dardot. I think it's, like, the in-game stuff where he's, like, by Pig and he's, like, trolling on stage. I think that's what made people hate him. But, like, during all of this, I kind of with him like because i was there like dude if you jungled for that team you're gonna lose your fucking mind because like how is your ad carry just not talking or like not gonna communicate to the support it's like what like bro just fucking play man like yes it's not gonna be easy all the time like where's your fucking grit like get through this shit. like play to win if you're our best fucking player or if like you like number one i don't even think that piglet was the best player on either of these teams like i think i think darduck was the best player on this team but if you're like supposed to be one of the best players let's say you are actually the best player then you have to fucking step up in these situations and actually get other people to your level. Like, could you imagine if Kobe was just like, yeah, I'm not going to talk to my teammates. I'm never going to talk to them again. Yeah, sure, he would fucking go about it, like, in a different way, but, like, you have to fucking lead and, like, show people how to fucking win and put in extra if you really care. He doesn't have that many close friends. Only close friend I could really think of would be Impact. Impact. 
yep. in Phoenix, and because Phoenix got a girlfriend about like last split or two splits ago, um, him and Phoenix have been pretty distant. And then also Impact used to live with NRG, and NRG was really far from us. So Impact actually didn't have a lot of close friends, and he was really Yoni, lonely. Yoni, he spent a lot of time. Just Yoni works for Loaded now. Yoni was our quest sponsor. That was that was my homie Yoni. He was my homie. I went to lunch with this guy a bunch of times. He was he was just a fucking real one. I love Yoni. Whenever we were done with scrims and he holy shit, bro, this is memory lane. God damn, this is memories right here. The players because they are much younger than him and also the culture is really different. So um, the only people that he could really like socialize with were me and David. And in spring split, our schedule was pretty intense. So on Sundays, I would take time off, and sometimes he would hang out with David, and sometimes David would would take time off so he was really lonely so when he went to korea and he had a lot of opportunities to see his friends see his girlfriend um he took a lot of them so i would say during games itself his motivation okay. was really high but outside of practice his motivation wasn't high as it could be stop pausing please Always, bro. Always. This one the dumb cat. I'm in this. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, Best part about Piglet going to KBBQ. This guy cooked everything and was just the ultimate fucking mastermind of KBBQ. Best part. He would do it all. Piglet would do it all. He would he would cook it all and then he would give everyone like their portions. You know, like he would just like split it all up and everything. He was the he was the ultimate homie. Oh, it's so ironic, bro. I can't believe it. I can't believe that he's saying these words, bro. It's like there is just there is just no fucking there, there's no like concept of what there's no like self-reflection or anything bro like come on this is all applicable to him so ironic so fucking ironic not self-aware he's not self-conscious like i don't know bro he's oh, it's grief it's a grief it's such a grief probably Start off about Korea. I definitely loved Korea. Just being in Korea, all of the solo queue I played, all of the food I ate, all of the things that I did in Korea was just amazing. What is Matt doing now? I thought he was coach for EG. Like, sparking. I think there was a lot of friction getting built up because of the sort of arguments that were happening. And I think oh, he just... the way that as a team that we handled it was not good because it ended up causing a bunch of really just a lot of unnecessary conflicts that really just built up over the entire boot camp. I don't know, I've never really been the one to try to really relate with those kinds of personalities. They seem really out of my comfort zone. So when I like confront like Loco or like Dardock or maybe even Piglet, those kinds of personalities are yeah, not really what I was used to, so. Dealing with it, kind of just avoided confrontation. Just kind of, kind of just hoping everything would just ride along smoothly. And that caused me to have a lot of regrets. 
Bro, I was so mad. So I used to have my own room in the house and then randomly Steve decided to move in all of the academy players from their homes to like our apartments and there wasn't enough room for them. And I remember like I, I had beef with Matt, Matt and Solo Q. He was this guy named Matt Life. He was a like Blitzcrank one trick. I just thought this guy was a fucking asshole. I, I hated playing with him. And then I just remember like one day they're like, oh, by the way, we signed this guy to Academy. It's like, oh wait, you know, like I got like get beef with that guy. And then he moved into my room. Matt moved into my room. And I remember one day on LCS, I was so fucking pissed. One day on LCS, he like randomly like went to stay with a friend and he let his mom sleep in like his bed, which I thought was really fucking weird, like with me. So like, I randomly spent like shared a uh, like, uh, like before LCS, I just, had to sleep next to this fucking mom and she was like snoring horrendously and i got zero sleep before lcs it was like what the fuck, man like how is this real i remember it like that was one of the times where i complained to like joka and like big c i'm like this is like kind of unacceptable but it just it's just really weird right like imagine in a gaming house you just like all right like my, my fucking mom's gonna like sleep in this bed i'm like does she not have a hotel or some shit? you flame him in game and then fuck his mom yeah bro like i got to like you have to do that shit. How else are you going to like assert dominance over your fucking, uh, you know, academy team if you're not going to sleep with their mothers? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm saying from my perspective. I mean, you can ask other people's opinions I, no, if I you don't want to. Be more open about I can't believe that, though. Like, I can't like, believe, like, bullshit. isn't that weird, though? Imagine you're just in a gaming house and you, like, have your own room and it's like, oh, by the way, like, some random guy is, like, moving in with you. It's like that you don't even like or you don't know. All right, cool. Like, that's number one. Oh, actually, he's just going to, like, go somewhere else for it. I don't even know where the fuck he went. And instead, his fucking mom is gonna sleep in the fucking room with you. What? Like, I mean, I gotta deal with myself first. Like, after I deal with myself, I'm sure I can call other people out. I mean, what about you guys? Like, I think it's just the coach. So strange, man. Because I can't. So like, strange. Well, no, because I can't call out Dardox bullshit or Piglet's bullshit if I have my own bullshit. I have to like, everybody has to fix themselves before they fix someone else. But you're the no. coach. I mean, I guess at some point, no, like, if you have to. People don't help you. If we wait for everyone to be perfect and only perfect people can help other people, then like that creates this system where if you're better at the game you can just shit on people that are worse than you at the game and then people that are worse than you at the game just get treated like garbage for me i think confidence wise i kind of just go up and down like it's a really roller coaster effect sometimes i'm really confident like, i don't care what anybody says um i just think i'm like the best player ever but other times i feel like i'm just a worthless player and i have nothing to contribute and that like sort of emotional roller coaster is like really bad when you're in a like mm -hmm. a, an environment where you're expect, expected to be consistent, expect, like everything's supposed to be constant. We should be practicing on teamwork. True. Like, mm -hmm. That happens True. when we yeah. yeah. like, Because we have internal problems. I agree. Why did I like respect And like, we like need to find there, success right? to improve our internal like, problems, but that comes from improving our gameplay, which comes from the one in 20 games that we actually study with you. We get better as a team. Some people being like, my feelings don't matter as much as the team's success, so I'll shut up. Yeah. But nobody's like that, because we're not normal people. Yeah, we're all is, people like, with at least one not exactly yeah, normal yeah, mental states. And like, we're all <laughs> different people with very... So you think people are incapable, like, or people... It's, it's not incapable, it's just harder. Yeah, like, it's right, it's definitely a choice, but it's not an easy choice. If it was easy, then every team would have good teamwork now. It's the teams that decide my teamwork and my team and my team's success is more important than my personal feelings. Damn, bro. This this actually looks like it would have been really fun. I should have kept on playing. Fuck, man. I, uh, now that I'm seeing everything again, I'm, I'm like regretting retiring. I should have stayed. Or every team would have good teamwork. This would have been great. Yeah, but there's also things that makes it unnecessarily harder. That could be easily fixed. I think every team has that. It's up to individuals to make their own choice. Not always struggled with being a player and putting a lot of work into being a player. And... Matt was someone that succeeded um, in a lot of ways, not by his own talent when he was playing with Piglet, because Piglet was just extremely good, and Matt's performance suddenly dipped, and a lot of the confidence and the ego he got to build with that um, suddenly was unmet. And <laughs> Bro, dude, I could not hear this. Bro. I feel like I feel like your coach can't be this low on you. I can't believe Loco's talking like this. He's like, I don't know, bro. Imagine hearing this if you're a player. He was, I guess, like, he had, like, a um, reality shock. And he was questioning a lot of the plays that he did, a lot of the directions um, that damn. was taken with the team, because 
um, I believe this like you should crazy. have the best fundamentals, the best basic, and you should constantly put work into that. Regarding what Pigan used to say to you, like if I say be specific and then you say friendly environment, it's really hard to help too. Like I can't just tell Pigan be friendly. Yeah. And, but if you tell me specifically, yo Pigan, I need you to say these things, this thing. It yeah, Piglet, I need you to not think that I'm a piece of fucking shit when I'm sitting next to you all day because it's going to actually make me feel like a piece of shit. Damn. Maybe that's why our, our other support player had a fucking mental breakdown and literally was just in fucking tears, ugly crying in scrims, bro. I can literally show you the, the situation where I just watched my teammate get ugly cry because of how hard you went on them and because you rage picked Urgot in a fucking scrim and ran it the fuck down, bro. Yes. And when you say this thing, then I can tell that directly to Piglet. And whenever he doesn't do that, I can be like, oh, you didn't do this. But if you just say be friendly, I can't be like, yo, Piglet, why weren't you friendly this game? Because I don't know directly Well, I mean, the want. solution to that would be like, we actually have to be friends. Like, that's like a solution. It's not just like, just say friendly things. Yeah. Okay, what do you want in terms of I mean, you see how like CLG is like a very like friendly environment. They're like very teamwork driven. Mm -hmm. And they got second in MSI, and like, mm -hmm. yeah, like I've, I mean, I've talked to you before, like how CLG's environment is ideal for people to improve, mm -hmm. and like for just never happened in there it's though. Like it's impossible. Very results driven. Like if we're not winning scrims, like it's a bad scrim, mm -hmm. and it's like the opposite for CLG. Like if they're losing scrims, it's still a productive scrim. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was like an optimal way to run, like scrims and like have practice. Mm -hmm. And I think the key to that would be a friendly environment, being friends with all your teammates. Sure. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, like, that's something that... No, I CLG... So, guys, CLG was, like, the perfect team environment. This is, like, when, like, they were bringing up players like Huhi and, like, Huhi and Afro were fucking, like, dabbing on stage. You remember that shit? Like, they, they were just, like, the number one team. And, like, Sticks, they joined the team. They they raised them up. If shit went wrong, they are always positive. Like, this was actually facts, what Matt's, what, what Matt's saying. Like, the environment for TL was so impossible to improve in because, like, I mean, the way it worked was there was just, like, a hierarchy within our team. Like, it was, like, the Koreans and then and me but we didn't get along but it's like it was just always the koreans and and me arguing and then quas and fucking quas especially just got treated like shit on our team straight up like they just got treated like shit. like i went too hard on quas for sure because i i was so frustrated all the time about how he could never do 2v1s properly so like i would go hard on quas and then piglet would just fucking shit on like special <laughs> like it was an interesting team environment it was a weird hierarchy we had that's before, like, you should probably work on it. Okay, how do you want to work on it? I mean, to be honest, I don't have the answer, but a good start would be to, yeah, try and be friends, I guess. Okay, so whenever I suggest things like, let's go do this, or let's go do this, or let's go do this, or in the past where I brought up what are the people being friends with each other, you say stuff like, I don't think I can ever be friends with this person, I don't think I can ever be friends with this person, <laughs> this, this seem personality productive. is too different, I don't think I can do things with well, this person. Yeah, it's person. hard for me to see that, but... I mean, that's like what it takes to be a good team, I think. So I like try to facilitate that and then try to get that going. But pe various people complain about I can't be friends with this person and they don't they won't put the first foot forward. And it's Hold hard on, to I'm searching for something. All, and I think you're part of that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm asking you to fix a problem I don't know how to fix. And I guess it's hard for you to fix it yourself. So I don't know. Right, and exactly right there. He's saying something to reply to like what you just mm -hmm. said. And you just look at him. Bear in the face, close your eyes and roll your eyes. Like that is so disrespectful and Yeah. Yeah, like how do you think that makes like yeah, I mean yeah, just straight up you don't take into like players' feelings at all with anything you do it's true. as a coach. Like me and Piglet, for example, we can take the harsh criticism that you give because yeah, we have thick skin, but like all of us aren't gonna have thick skin and the way that you like treat Matt and Sam is like yeah, that's but but you you did you treat fam too. you treat fam just as even worse than me and then you say True. it's fine because of the relationship and True. Matt and Sam both separately on occasions told me I want you to uh, be straight it's up with and just give the criticism it's all in true. the comments and then so I do exactly what's asked and then you say how I, mean, I treat how Matt is, and Sam is, is disgusting but you treat Sam worse. How is rolling your eyes in his face while he's trying to make his point, giving critic direct criticism? What does he get from you rolling still your eyes? That's just point. straight up without like. By respecting their feelings while you're giving up, like, it can be friendly. That's like the whole point. Of I mean, the thing. problem is that that Loco hears his like people say, sh and then he'll just be like, "This is a fucking stupid thing to say," and then it's like impossible for him to mask the fact that he thinks that somebody just said something absolutely retarded. And then, like, when he 
but when he responds to it you just sense that in his talking like that just is what it is bro it, it just it's just how it goes with him like, he can't mask the fact that he thinks that you're dumber than him i want to be friendly but if he makes the same mistakes over and over again like don't complain about things don't do this don't do this and then we consistently do it like it's hard for me to like care about you guys like it, i mean you're mine con you contradict yourself all the time like just now you're using when when you bring up a fault on yourself, you mm -hmm. bring up someone else's fault, which in this case was mine. Instead of admitting your own fault and then trying I to fix it, say and it's all, hard no, no, for no, no, me. No, let me finish. And okay, also, finish. you just sense you, it. You also just made excuses for yourself on top of it, which you tell Matt and others not to do all the time. Okay, my bad. Perfect. It's so disingenuous. Oh my god, it's so. Um, I can't imagine. Like, imagine a, a, a psychologist just sitting here. I just like trying to analyze this. And then you're being sarcastic instead of trying to solve problems. No, I I literally have been trying to problem solve this whole time with a positive attitude to it's so passive aggressive, situation. everything. Okay. I said perfect because you, you answered correctly and you, you moved on productively. Cool. Thank you, Loco. Thank you, right, Loco. So anyways, regarding problems, if you're not gonna be specific about things and if you don't do the things I ask, I can't it's like really hard for me to help you. Okay, I guess I just didn't know your perspective of it. Okay. Oh, I, I've noticed Matt getting down on himself a ton of times. There's Matt's the most mature one in the room. Matt's sort of in the same position as me, where if he sort of fails now or falters in his career, then he's got nothing to look back to because I don't know if he dropped out of high school, but I did. So I, I definitely understand the feeling he has where he feels like I've talked to Matt separately and I know he's said this in front of everybody before where he knows he's underperforming and he feels like he's not an LCS level player, but he, he's got nothing else to do. I mean, he's so not, he's, he's got not no choice to then to feel like he's bringing his team down, but show up every day because he's got no other options. You know what I mean? Oh, I forgot. Smoothie, Smoothie had a breakdown after two weeks of scrimming. I forgot to even mention that. Okay, so X Special and Smoothie both were brought to tears by by piglet and then this is like matt the third support that came in and this is like how he's feeling i don't know if he got if, if he got brought to tears i mean he's been down on himself i don't know what happens off camera um but yeah look i actually found this time right here in rebirth uh the first one where i'm talking right here this is literally maybe five minutes why is it why is it, bro what the f am i doing my, i'm doing some ah uh, or some shit. so this is me talking literally five minutes after I watched a special break fucking down. People were like, damn, Dom sounds kind of dumb here. I literally just watched my teammate get shit on. Five minutes afterwards, I'm here. The young Dom. So yeah, five I, minutes I beforehand, dude. I understand Crazy. where Matt's coming from. And I, I, I wouldn't wish that kind of feeling on any, any player ever in league. Dude, look at their shitty fucking room. They had like one, uh, uh, dude, it was just way too small of a space. Come on. Like 24? I was, yeah, I was 24. I was 24 there. Now I'm 31. Oh no, it was extremely volatile Korea in the scrim room, but outside of the scrim room, we all loved each other. It was awesome, like going out and I mean, I've always, I've always loved Piggy like a brother, and I've always had a, a ton of respect for him as a player. But I mean, w nobody's ever themselves when they're frustrated or upset. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but Darnock's like really say. on the next level when he's frustrated or upset. Like it is, it, it's just like he, this guy. Like he will literally just be like, "Yeah, you're fucking stupid. Like you're like, why the fuck are you playing like this in a fucking game? Like you're actually just fucking dog." Shit. Like he'll just be saying that sh in real life. Like he'll be saying what like somebody who's mentally ill will be typing. Like so he'll be saying what Tarzan says on his stream, but to his teammates. You know, like that's what's going on. That they regret when they say when they say I'm angry or whatever it may be, and I'm I'm the same way. Like there's a lot of things I've said during scrims where I'm just like. Yeah, there's no way I'm wrong on this where it's just my ego talking and it's like, yeah, obviously I'm, I'm wrong. Like I come back to it like it was a, a cycle where it would be like our egos would go at it in the AM and then we'd be like, all right, let's go out for dinner. And then we'd go out for dinner and like, oh, my bad today, dude. Like, sorry. But I mean, I don't we know about that ego part. heads the day after and nothing changed. <laughs> over, the when over the course of this 36 minute game, I didn't talk for 20 seconds straight. Damn, I really checked out, dude. And then you really now you're being. Me. What is it? This is what you do when you're checked out, and when I call you out. Ooh, I'm day. checked out of real life too. Fuck, you got me, dude. <laughs> Holy, I mean, f it's going off. Sarcastic. He's going off. Yeah, cause it's fucking dumb, dude. Like, what the? F it's 
what you do when you disagree. You become sarcastic because you have nothing logical to say about it. I mean, I checked out for 20 minutes during this, during 20 seconds during this 36 minute game. I wouldn't account that to checking out during the whole game, like you said. Like, you talk about me speaking in absolutes, you spoke in an absolute in this example. You checked out this game. So I checked out all 36 minutes of this game. I don't think that's accurate at all, Loco. You want I, ma I made a, I made like a, really I made a mistake. Because you can't be called out on a mistake without fighting I mean, about it. Yeah, because I didn't check out this game. I tried fucking hard, and I Ask got... Ask Piglet, ask Matt, ask the rest of the team. I mean, Zig, Zig thinks I didn't check out. Okay, Piglet and Matt did. Okay, well, that's two to three. I still think that's not very good odds for you. Oh, God, it's so hard to watch. Holy sh Respect, bro. We're going in. I don't it's think that. Three to two, and also with coaching staff, you just argue. Coaching staff, it. as in yourself. Yeah, coaching staff, as in myself, as in the person you said you were just listening to. Yeah, but I'm not listening to bullshit. Because you don't agree with it, it's bullshit. Yeah, because I didn't check out this game. Like, no one's gonna it's know who checked out more than myself, dude. Bullshit, Matthew. Oh, bullshit. Are you telling me you can't joke around? Like, you think it's bullshit no, when it's I tell you you shouldn't. Different, dude. Like, I like if anyone checked out that game, it was 100% Samson, and you haven't said a fucking word to him. What do you mean I haven't said a fucking word to him? Like, like you said, you're like, oh, using yeah, absolutes again, where you like you become hella emotional and you use absolutes. The first thing I called out was Sam and you guys checking out a game. I called both of you guys out. What do you mean I haven't yeah, said a word to Sam? Like, mm. But Sam just out. agrees and Sam's like, okay, yeah, I was checked out, so there's nothing more to go over. But you disagree about you checking out. That's why I harp on you. Okay, yeah. I agree, Loco. I, I'm agreeing with Loco. I disagree well, with Loco 100%. I think it's absolute bullshit. Everything coming out of his mouth came from the ass first. You can't Damn! Take criticism at all. Damn. I take criticism just fine when it's actual criticism. Holy! You, you don't get to be the one that decides the actual you criticism. Up when I'm actually wrong and in the wrong and I make mistakes, I admit it 100%, dude. This is the direct cause of slow rate of improvement. Like, I thought we already talked over this. You just listened to the coach. Yeah, but if that game happens in LCS, I'm going to talk the same amount, 100%, because that was my role in the team. Like, my role wasn't to be a shot caller that game, it was to be an aide. And whether you agree or disagree, like that's up to you. But I know what my champion does and what my role on the team was that game. Sorry. I mean, the big problem I see with this is like, as I've kind of outlined to me, unfortunately, if you're the owner and you're having problems with a player's attitude, what's unfortunate about this specific instance of Dardoch is he is literally the most valuable player in the Team Liquid organization for League of Legends because he's True. a star player. He's at a position where there are very few star players in LCS. And even worse, he's a native North American player, and therefore he doesn't need a visa situation, and also he doesn't need import slot. So as a result, he is literally the most valuable player in your League of Legends team within your organization. So the big issue for me is, not only do you have to kind of make decisions that take you down a path where the end result is he's always in the team, and something changes, but he's always in the team, whether that be a different coach or working with him in a different way, he's always in the The big problem to me is, you can never have leverage over that player for the reasons I've outlined, because ultimately that will make them incredibly valuable to other teams. So one of the big problems with working with Dardoch is deep down, Dardoch must have known for the entire split, if things don't go my way, if I don't like the way this coach deals with me, if I don't like the way our team does and we don't succeed, at the end of it all, I have the ultimate option, which is stop trying to fix all this, just leave, go to another team. To me, the big problem is that had to have been in the back of Dardoch's mind the whole time. And that's why, unfortunately, the decisions that were made, I feel like it's not that they were all wrong. It's just that they led to a place where eventually he could leave or would be have to be removed. Our secondary Old, team is expected uh, to be competitive, expected to try to make LCS, expected to try to win Challenger, while at the same time, every single move seemingly for Spring Sprint was to help the main team thrive. Yep. My yep. name is David Lim, and I was the head coach of... Dude, and he wanted me... He's like, dude, like... Like, okay, can you come back and play for our academy team? Can you come back and play for our academy team? Team Liquid Academy. And I was like, hell no. While helping out with the Team Liquid LCS team whenever I could. Dardock and Matt, two of the primary players supporting Jungle, were taken from them. And then we didn't have many options because Dom wanted to retire. It sure. really deterred from Team Liquid Academy's spring progress. Taking over for I Will Dominate is Dardock in the jungle. Dardock started to develop a reputation because he deserved one. He was playing really well. Sure. And because of that, he put more expectation on himself. But with that expectation comes eventually if your teammates are failing you, burden. It became hard for him to see through those mistakes. But in spring, 
especially after the CLG loss. The keyboard! He only thought Let him know, Loco! Yeah, I'm disappointed that we're stuck to either get third or fourth, but... I love that. Yeah, better than our expectations. Of now I'm covered in place, water, but it was worth it. When you're not competing for a championship and you're competing for third, fourth, it's a completely different dynamic. Who would you actually rather face between TSM and Immortals? I don't have a preference of TSM Immortals. We're going to smash whoever we get against. We're not going to slow down for practice just because it's like a less valuable match or anything. We're just going to meet whoever we play against, beat them, and then move on to next split. I can tell he really wanted to win, but he wanted to win without hassle, and it showed. I could never see, um, I could never see Loco popping off and take it seriously because he just didn't seem like that. It like felt forced. Like some people I could like see like get like, man, like let's go. Like and start breaking shit. when Loco did it. I was always like kind of uncomfortable. I was like, all right, bro. Whoops. It's like my exit lag. When you're an employee of a company, there's a certain way that you need to behave. And you know, Josh is he's young, right? And he's still learning. He was like you can't 17 harass somebody at and then have no consequences associated with it. So at the time we decided, all right, well, let's document every single thing that he has done. And at the same time, let's also take a look at- Oh, here's something that wasn't in this. So like during the Korea boot camp, it got so bad that Dardock actually left the boot camp and went to like go try out for TSM because TSM was having some like problems with Svenskaren at that point. And then he like ended up like just not getting the spot and then going back to TL. Cause like this, this was like before that they were like these really insane contracts where there was like inconceivable buyouts and stuff like that. And like, it was just, it was just way different back then. Like, I, like I remember my buyout in season five was like 15 K or something. So yeah, it got so bad that Dardock was no longer with the team. He like rage quit the team and he was going to fly back. But then first he went to TSM and did like a trial with TSM the coaching staff and the organization and look at the things that we have contributed as well. And let's list all of them out. There needed to be consequences with Josh for his actions and he needed to, he needed to understand that you can't, you can't behave that way. So we suspended him at that time and the suspension lasted for two weeks um, on the calendar date and we had to make a decision on whether or not we would use him uh, going into LCS or not. With your behavior, the way that you compete as an athlete, one of the things that I think is an issue is your uh, self-awareness, you know, like your ability to recognize what you're doing and then control your emotions. You just kind of act as you feel and that's a sign of immaturity. Right? You just act however you feel. There's, there's no thought to it. It's just all reactionary based. When this happens, then things escalate really fast. I know my role better than anyone in this organization. I know my role. God damn, he's just going in on Big Steve. Like, come on. And I will stand by that 100%. Okay, so, okay, so yeah, I mean, you tell me a bunch of and you say you don't right, care. separate the issue. Yeah. I, like, you guys can't keep doing this back and forth bullshit. Like, I'm gonna just cut it off right now. This is just us listing issues. If you guys are gonna do the back and forth thing, you guys need to, like, take a minute to step out and cool down. Because that can't happen if we're gonna have a productive meeting. All right. Oh, this is a uh, Nick fan. This is Nick. Uh, he is the person that's the GM of FlyQuest now. He was GM of Immortals afterwards. Uh, this, is a, this is another one of my homies. He's a real one. Like, I don't, I don't want you to come in and go, oh, can I counter argue? I don't want you to argue with points that are being made, even if you want to try to dispute and prove your side. That's not the time for this for me. Oh, I actually think that. I mean, even now, Loco's, he's obviously upset. Like, he's on the stand flicking his lighter. He's getting, he's like having to step out every five seconds because he's mad. Like, this isn't <laughs> a productive argument either way. Like, he's obviously upset and it's like really like pissing me off okay so what i what i'd recommend pissing is, me off is just take a break um 
and we'll just pick up tomorrow. How many homies? Yeah, it's because I lived with all these people. Like, these are all this real ones, bro. Progress. I lived with all these people. Absolutely. I know all these people. Yeah, I've literally hung out with everyone in this room. Sit with Darrell for a little bit and just like... I lived with Steve sure for three years. And, hey, you just want to see how things are going on, you know? I'm like people forget because i've been a streamer for a while but i was a pro player for five years like i know all of these guys like i know this apartment this is right next to the scrim room scrim rooms on the other side this is in the same apartment complex this is downstairs on the first floor like dude this was just it bro the way that you did that i was, was on tl this year at the beginning of this year i was still on tl yes just wait a second the non-verbal communication can be as strong if not stronger than what you actually say Okay, um, and where are the trophies then? Same places, upsets. Based we on we hit them together in I'm the same mad, cabinet. I'm frustrated, Stardock. I don't like this. All these all these things that you were saying, just based on how you acted. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I did you feel the same thing? Yes, yes it was really obvious. It's really, but no, no, no. I'm saying the non-verbal communication yeah. sent that message to you in your head. It also sent that message to Stardock. So. It's how you carry yourself. So instead of, let's say, Nick, I think we should all step out of the room. You should be like, Nick, good idea. Why don't we all just take a break? I got to piss. I'm going to step out real fast, guys. Just kind of regroup. Okay. And, 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 you, and you make eye contact with everybody. You look at Dardog. Like, cool. Is it okay if I step out? And then you step out. That would have sent the message like, oh, I appreciate the suggestion about going stepping out. I am not mad. I am in control of my emotions. That's not what happened. And here's my advice, is that this is an area where you need to develop. Like, you have a problem with, almost like Dardock, it's kind of funny that way, where you just <laughs> show your emotions very quickly well, on your I, sleeve. I, from my point of view, like, I thought he was going to cry, so no one told me to. I was like, oh, shit, he's going to cry, and like, I don't want it to be like a mess. So I went and got him toilet paper, like, look right behind you, like, I don't want it to, like, make a mess of themselves, and, like, I still care, like, so make sure, like, you're not crying on yourself. Your perception's off. Okay, in this instance, it is. Your intentions are good. Your intentions are good. Your intentions are great. We don't need to dig into it anymore. All I'm saying is that when we've talked about, this is so funny how, like, some of the things are so similar, but about being more self-aware of what is going on, it requires people that care about you, like me, and to give you feedback so that you can develop. And it's not about judging, it's not about, it's literally so that we can work. Clean yourself off, you little bitch. Stop crying all over yourself, you're making a fucking mess, you're, you're making a scene. It's fucking embarrassing, clean yourself off. Together, okay. in, a, in a better way. Just think more that your communication is not just what you said. It's how you act, it's fidgeting, <laughs> like that, you know? It is, it's a lot of that stuff, okay. you know? Um, it. It, everything is is sending a message okay. just be more thoughtful about what you're communicating even if you're not talking <laughs> they were so bad they had to bring it back oh no and so the decision was you know what moon is hungry he really wants to play in lcs he's been playing really well in challenger why not give him a shot? Let's see what he has, you know, to offer. A lot of rookies step up, and I have absolutely no problem giving someone that's really hungry, that works really hard, that's proved results, an opportunity to prove themselves. Especially when Kunalin, thank you for the five gifted. I appreciate that. Thank you. Acting more entitled. So for me, it was a pretty easy conclusion that yes, let's give Moon a shot. From what I've heard, it's like mainly Dardock. I'm hearing a lot of it is like attitude and communication problems. It's never- So when Moon was with NRG, he hated playing on the team so much with GBM that he was messaging me privately, asking me to take his job for him <laughs> on NRG. I swear on my life. And I got an offer to play with NRG during that time where I was uh, streaming. This is like early 2016. Um, but it literally felt from everything they told me, it, it felt like I was just stepping right back into Team Liquid. Like a Korean hierarchy at the top, like GBM was just Piglet 2.0. <laughs> and I remember like Moon actually messaging me being like, please play with the team. I cannot play with these guys. And then he went to Academy for TL. Yeah, Energy was was a show. But their, their, um, their CEO or the owner, maybe owner CEO, I forget what it was. But 
It was him and Bon 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 Quiche. Forget the guy's name. He was the analyst at the time. His name was Alec. They 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 drove to my apartment and they like took me out to like a nice lunch and they were like just trying to fucking get me to play. Like he was like, dude, like I've got. I've got 10K in my pocket right now. It's a signing bonus if you decide to play for the team. Like, he was actually just going off, bro. Gerard Kelly was going off. And, like, he offered me, like, a, a contract that was two and a half times more than I made with TL. And streaming was still, like, better than it by far. It wasn't even close. Perfect. Like, every team has its problems. I'm Galen Moonholgate, and I'm the jungler for Team Open. <laughs> it was so funny. Bro, I got it. It was like that flex. I got 10k in my pocket shoot. right now. Um, TL is amazing. Like, like some shit like where it's like, oh, I got 10k, bro. Like, holy shit, 10k. I've never seen that much. Bro, I'll suck your for 10k. Like, he thought I was going to, like, freak out. But I, I I, was like, you know, I'll, I'll think about it. Everyone is so funny. We're just, like, all really close. And it just feels like I fit in perfectly. Solo. TLA uh, solo. Just expect TLA to make LCS. That's... That's what everyone's in it for. Um, if it's any less than that, then it's a disappointment. Yep, he hated being on energy. Since I won't have that much time with the new roster uh, and playing with the main team, for the first few weeks of LCS, it'll mainly just be us, us gelling, um, me like figuring out the play style, figuring out how to communicate with everybody. Uh, but I definitely expect us to be a really strong team going into this split. Moon was like, he was insane in solo queue. The problem queue. with removing Dardoch to me over removing Piglet is I don't see what the future of the main Team Liquid team is if you remove Dardoch. Like, are you just gonna bring him back later when his attitude's been readjusted, that like fucking crazy Orwellian term that people use nowadays? <laughs> I, in that scenario, I don't see it happening. Like, I don't see why he would then come back later from another team and suddenly be great and you're gonna insert him again. So you are essentially- Just send him to a re-education camp team. and okay. have him come okay. back. What's the best case scenario? He goes to the challenger team, wins challenger, and then you have to sell the team and therefore he's not on your organization anymore. Or you just bring it back into this is back when you could promote into LCS and there was relegations, by the way, just in case people team, need that context. You did the, the problem of resolving him and Piglet for a split. So in that scenario, I think Team Liquid as a team would actually be worse if you removed Dardock entirely and just had Moon play for the whole split. I don't think it would have been as good. What's funny about this whole scenario is I really wonder if after all of this, both of these players and Loco Dokuru as well really can't look at it and in hindsight realize oh, actually, we kind of really need that Dardock guy as a jungler. Probably is a better investment of our time and effort than trying to find someone else who can play that role. To me, it's like try, rather than try and fix one problem, you try to fix multiple problems at once and in different directions. It's not really a way to look at it. And like, there's no real reason on paper as to why that would work to me. LCS! We have a two-time defending champion, three new teams, a new best of three format, and an all-new battle theater. The fight for worlds is on, and the North American LCS Summer Split starts right now. On stage, the biggest tools you guys have is each other, and the communication needs to be fucking strong, okay? We're a new team, in a sense, because we have a new jungler, and jungle is a huge fucking part of how we play the game, and so the information flow has to be there, okay? I want everyone to talk i know we play really well in elf yes and i know we're in a rocket there's none other than sam toby hartman Kensler. how you doing dude great how are you i'm doing pretty fast everyone looks so young it was seven years ago bro this is some old continuing our day of action with newcomers team envy taking on team liquid now liquid like people will be like shitting on logo they're like he's so immature as a coach but like bro like come on like he was literally 24 into this summer split after a top four finish but we know these guys expected holy shit, it's, it's lod it's benji probably playing Phoenix, Pistana or something a great split last split they were top performers uh and liquid they're going to be looking to have those two veterans bring the consistency from last split but something that won't be consistent uh is going to be the jungler you know there's a big question surrounding liquid how they are going to adapt losing Dardock. that guy was such a big part of their resurgence last split him and matt together were a shot calling combo uh but he's not with the squad now stepping in as liquid jungler is going to be moon who actually struggled 
struggled to find success last split on energy, but this team seems confident that Moon has improved. Yeah, he does have at least two games to impress, so we'll see if he will be able to show us that. He's going to get onto this inhibitor. Lorlo has the convergence drop. Moon pulls the trigger. He gets Envy. into the back. Seraph in the front. It's Piglet trying to shred through. Moon goes low. He's finally going to drop the rocks. And five before are facing loss. If they turn this around, they can't do it. And it's Envy who drops the Nexus and takes game number one. And they found Piglet. He's dead too. They might just try to end the game right here. Moon gets caught and drops the rest, but Envy are not satisfied with just the inhib. They want the Nexus. And they do claim their second series victory here. Undefeated. We're a really, really good team last night because we put in so much effort and we work together as a unit. Like that made, that's what made us good. So today what I want to see is, I want to see Hell everyone no. just doing their job. We gave each other individual roles so we can rely on people to do their job and work together as a unit. And that's what I want to see. And I want to see people doing their job. Bro, look at, so look at Darnock's face. Look at that face, bro. He's about to get run it. He is not done. He is not done. I love that shit. That's what I want to see. And I want to see people doing their job. And if someone's not doing their, their job, I don't want to hear blame. I want to hear people saying, yo, yo, it's fine. You can still do this. And I want us to work as a team. Sweep one. Matt's playing to be <laughs> it looks like communication is breaking down a little bit, missing that leader Holy. in the jungle, yeah. and Liquid seems uncoordinated currently. But they're not in the right place. Piglet, we, he commented before the split that he would never beat a Korean team with foreign teammates, and that's a bad mentality yeah. to have. The bubble oh, is low. He's going to either choose to heal or bubble on this. Biofrost is low. The kill from Piglet goes over to double it for first blood, and Biofrost flashes in this instant, thinking he could save himself. But oh, he's down. Teleports down. Wait, Moon's walking up. Walking up. Why would Moon walk up? He doesn't think Bjergsen has the damage at that point. Damn. With the backline right now, Phoenix looks like he gets taken down, scrambled up once again. Moon is walking up. He is inting. Some of that damage with his ultimate, but it's not going to be enough. PSM will look to take game one of the series over Team Liquid. 2015 season was documented. Rebirth is the name of the documentary. I don't think That's the one that I'm in. Why we're losing is Moon's fault. Primarily, could you be playing better? Of course. Is it his fault solely alone? No. We wanted to give Moon an opportunity to prove himself, and unfortunately, Moon did not prove himself. You know, can Moon improve? Can he kind of get out of this? Of course. <laughs> Bro, they fucked up Moon so bad. They just threw his ass into like the drowning team. They're like, "Yep, did he swink or swim? Nope. He looks like he fucking failed." Well, fuck you, Moon. Dardock's coming back. In sports, you don't have the luxury of time. It was a large, intense, consultative mediation process that the organization invested into improving Dardock, and he was responsive to that. So at that point, we said, look, let's get Josh back in there and let's see what this guy's got to, you know, got to prove. That pushed Liquid to the brink, so Liquid are now making adjustments. They will sub in Dardock for game two. The question is, will this change Liquid's fortunes? Because that seems a little bit like desperation there if they're subbing him in, even though they had suspended him. Oh yeah, after the Korean <laughs> thing where I was implicated back in the team because they would have gotten relegated without me. <laughs> Holy sh**, bro, his ego is out of control. Holy sh**, I love it. Yeah. Um, made me promise to like do everything. Like we had agreements, like there are things Loco wanted to see from me, I wanted to see from him. We played nice and then we went back to normal, pretty much. They want any chance, but so is Hotzer. We can do this, we can do this. Go right side, go right side. Here, bro. Come on, Lucian, actually. He was a rookie too. Yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. We can win this, we can win this. Honestly, I'm serious. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll if one of us talks. Coming, 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 coming. I think Bard might be there for me because he has portal. True. Careful, Bard. Got him in the box. Nice. Clean as though, by the way, from Dardock. I'm going down. I'm going down. Lucian's ulting. Kill Rek'Sai, just kill Rek'Sai. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. I'm 
the air, Mare. Oh, yeah, fuck. Eddie Flash. Lucian, Lucian. My bad. Fuck, we should have killed Terra. My bad. And now puts them down in the ground. Lorlo will be the next one. Biofrost trying to get on the other side of the mini. All right, oh, fight of a lifetime, baby. Life anymore. They're still going strong. They're still going with smiles on their faces, and they're going on to the Nexus. TSM will be two and zero in the first week of the NAS. I think it, people thought there were easy solutions. People thought, oh, if we just take Dardoch out for a little while and bench him, that'll teach him a lesson, and he'll really see how when we bring in this other jungler, we work better as oh. Sh yeah, we're way worse with that guy. Please, Dardock, come back. So then, <laughs> nothing. We'll be seeing Liquid oh, so in action in our first it's series. So and good. We have to talk about Dardock uh, returning to the lineup here and what that means for Liquid. Well, I love the storyline behind all this. You got a bad boy jungler who's really talented <laughs> but gets benched from attitude, and then he has to get brought back just from his sheer skill, and now he has to make sure that he can co bring the team together back and make these guys work. And to be Lord honest, in so that last base. game that they played last week, it looked like the entire team and not him was shaking. We benched Moon back to the to the TLA to bring Dardock back to carry our team. They know he can't stop the Flash on Burrow, and they know his ultimate is already down a little bit. Here we go, go. Dardock's in, Flash on Burrow is good, Lolo dives in under the turret, and it's first blood to Aurelia, they're under the turret for Dardock, more than enough health. He was probably thinking, all right, I can carry this team, I can lead this team. Ulti's way back in, Afro Moon forced to flash out, Nexus turret number two does melt, the Nexus will fall on Team Liquid, a convincing game number one. And as things were falling apart, he couldn't control his emotions and he had really bad comms where he was giving up really early, he was saying, oh, we f***ing lost, we can't win this game, what the f***, oh, what are we doing? Just f***ing do Baron or something, dude. I want to go to the next game already. I, Let's just keep I starting, man. <laughs> this shit is so f***ing pointless, what the hell, I just want to play the next one. And that was like Jeez. the final nail in the coffin. I think Peglet told me, real talk, that some of his bad SKT days, there was teammates of his saying that kind of stuff, and that's why he wanted to leave that team. And he didn't want to mm -hmm. hear it anymore. Mm -hmm. And when it's a game day, no matter what... I wish... I hope one day I could talk to Faker about that 2013 team. I, w I wish I could just have, like, a, a, a fluent conversation with Faker... Where I could just ask him, like, bro, do you think Piglet was the best player on that team? Just straight up? Because, like, I, mean, I, I heard some crazy-ass stories on this side. But, like, what was your take on that 2013 team? Oh, we should be playing to win. You kind of look like the GOAT to me, so. You shouldn't be giving up. Just saying. Oh, I'm going to get sauce, dude. <laughs> I'm hitting sweat, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're f***ing all done. That was like the real tipping point for Piglet, I'd imagine, because, I mean, I was feeling pretty, t pretty tilted off that, how Dardock on LCS stage was saying, okay, we'll just give up. I was like, what, why would you say let's give up on LCS stage? And then Piglet probably tilted the hell out of, like, just off the face of the earth. Just try and f***ing take their KDAs or some shit, dude. Take their KDAs. Get in there, Samson. This is my Malka KDA. Uh, bye, Piggy. Bye, Piggy. He gave up in Piglet's side, and Piglet viewed that as very, very disrespectful um, as he towards should. him and rest of the yeah. team. So yeah, this is why Dardock was the bad guy. Like, I think that's when. Like, All right, I see it now. I see flipped, it now. And he was like, "Oh, I'm no longer willing to work with Dardock." Uh, can I end yet, or what? God damn. Yeah, this one's a bit over, boys. Do we get it over with, or do you guys want to keep playing? Just let them get let them. Out. Okay. Yeah. Just keep pushing. When Piglet was playing on the main team, the conflict and between Piglet and Josh was pretty high. We decided to move Piglet down to TLA and move Fabi up to the main team. It was a mixture of Piglet wanting a week break. He's never had stage experience, so we wanted to give that to him because he asked for it. It was, we had a pretty easy week, so we were just mm -hmm. like, all right, just throw Fabi in. He had been working really hard, honestly, on TLA, and we thought he deserved the chance. And Situationally, with Piglet feeling a little burnt out, we wanted to give him kind of like a mental break. Dardock and Piglet really didn't get along too well. I don't know who we heard that from. Piglet, we had issues on the team like always, and Piglet wanted a break, so we gave him a week to play on TLA. They didn't agree That's on what whether or not the game should be played around like top or bottom. Dardock thought yep. it was like a top-centric meta at the time, and Piglet thought it was a bot-centric meta. 
then they couldn't ever like reach an agreement. Josh would do something that would anger Piglet, and then Piglet would do something Abby that was would the anger goat, Josh. Bro. And it got to the I told point you, man. Me and that guy on site, I would come back every now and then when I was when I like moved out and I like started streaming. I would come back and still it was just always on site. I would scrap this guy 24/7 we would try to work on the issue i we saw would, him we were throwing we hands try to resolve it talk through it have them express themselves you know and it just wasn't working it they just kept butting heads over and over and over and over tla did have much more of a team cohesiveness and i think piglet saw that from the outside and said well i want to check that out and fabby wanting stage experience kind of worked out in that sense <laughs> On site, wrestling the homies, yeah. No punching in the face. That was the only rule. It was on site. Instead of running two teams that were kind of helping each other and that you can move the roster back and forth, I was running two completely different teams and they weren't helping each other. They were actually competing with one another and I had to make each team as good as possible. Um, the other four players that were on Team Liquid Academy really wanted Holy to shit, I forgot Stunt was on this team. And on the other hand, we had a lot of issues between Piglet and Dardock on the main team. I thought, okay, well, what if Piglet were to play for Team Liquid Academy? How would he feel about that? So we spent three or four days and we had Piglet playing with the team and he loved it. Like, he was just elated. He was like communicating more. The other four players loved him. He was super happy. His mood went up. He um, was just enjoying life. Like you could just tell in his behavior. You know, I would ask him, hey, Piglet, how's are go things are going? He's like, they're amazing. I love it here. I love playing for this team. Like teammates just look up to me and and uh, we're winning and this is just fun and I, and I and I want to go back to Perfect. what's being fun. The alternative was, okay, well then why don't we move Fabi up to play for LCS? And leading into that decision, Crap. Fabi was just decimating in NACS. Like if you go back and watch the matches in NACS where Fabi was playing before we did the switch, All right. his KDAs Here. and how he was so the reason Fabi ended up on the academy team is because he used to play ARAMs with Big Steve. No, no joke. In like season three, they were ARAM bros. They just met each other through like ARAM community. And then like Steve just like hooked up all the homies. That's how Joka Steve ended up being the manager. Like literally Steve would just like play ARAMs. And like if you were good at the game, he would like get you on the academy team. If you like were just like, you know, you were looking for a job, he would just make you the fucking manager. Straight up, bro. It was ARAMs. Played ARAMs with with, uh, with Big Steve. Is an ARAM homie. Swear swear on everything. Swear on everything. I'm gonna use the rest real quick. He was carrying the games was just unreal. So it was kind of like, well, we're still getting a really damn good AD carry for the LCS team, and Piglet's enjoying the NACS team. So it was a logical choice. We were able to combat the uh, conflict between Dardock and Piglet. Piglet was happy, the main team was happy because Fabi was playing really well and his trajectory was way up. So at the time it seemed like, nah, that's a logical solution, let's go with that. So when I worked with Fabi on TLA, he had a lot of motivation, he had a lot of drive, and he was actually a really good player. And I thought he would do decently well, and I thought at first he did this do decently well. Ask your questions and talk to your teammates, okay? Don't assume stuff, and if you're not getting something done, talk to each other. Yo guys, we need to come here, yo guys, what do you want to do? Yo guys, what lane setup we need to be? Like, if you're not in sync, it's because you guys- Like in Challenger, I was like, Either I carry or we lose. But like now it's like, I'm not gonna carry, but I'm gonna make sure Phoenix carries or Sam carries or even Dardot carries. Like I'll make sure they carry. 
I playing, you know, utility style where I play to help my teammates rather than I play for my own, like, you know, sake. I'm not going to be farming bot all game, trying to scale up. I'm going to be grouping up more, looking for picks with my teammates, moving around the map with them, giving up farm God for God damn, that. that's hype. And that's like sort of my style right now. Story coming out of Liquid tonight has to be the substitution of Liquid Academy player Fabi in for Piglet at 80 carry. Not yourself, or somebody else. It heals them, but he's gonna need something more. Therian, he's knocked out from the turret, flashes over the wall, takes a lot, and Fabi gets the kill. Gate gets knocked up, and he's destroyed. Team Liquid are going to break Fabi the was base such a troll, man. And try to end this game, taking a quick 2-0 to zero over Phoenix One. Yeah, 26 minutes in, these games have kicked up. Quickly, Darduck walled off once again. Pop skills get a run. North of Phoenix, Phoenix over the wall. They want this fight actually, and it's gonna be him zoning out Oku, who's actually surviving reasonably well. Has a hex breaker. But look at Kiwi again, he's already gonna be going down. And the egg pop, it's two kills, it's three kills, it's liquid what? killing absolutely everybody. And two more autos to do it. That will be the game, that will be the series. Liquid approved at three and three. Yeah. Bro, look at this lineup, bro. Look at this lineup. OQ, GBM, Kiwi Kid, Santorin, and Quas. And they went like ninth place and got relegated. Didn't they get relegated? I think they got relegated out of LCS. They were just doomed. And Fabi, dude, Fabi was like the ultimate troll, man. He was the ultimate troll, but he's actually like fun as f to be around in person. Will be the game that will be the series. Liquid approved at three and three. Yeah. What happened to OQ? Yeah, I have no clue what happened to OQ, actually. I just think about that. But the Nexus is already dead. And Team Liquid 2-0 Apex. Takes him out, the ult is close, Pogbelter flashes in and gets on with the Chaos Storm and now Phoenix and in blisteringly fast fashion, Immortals claim a 2-0 over Team Liquid. Dardock right. gets himself a kill, sneaking in to get plowed down as well. Yeah, Maybe. Impact not enough to try and take this down. Team Liquid is going to charge forward and take down the Nexus. Cloud and Nine. Dardock's just smurfing all over everyone. Team Liquid topple a giant to take the series. Yeah, and C9 was looking so good last week. To come in it felt normal. It felt real. Hold on, what's it? Fabby, man. Him, but He's such a troll. A Might just get it in the midst of it all, and Dardog actually cleans up the back end yeah, now. Sarah. I'm not nervous at all. I feel a lot better about the game. Well, just being on stage. Dude, Still gotta work on my play. Will be a kill picked up. First blood goes over to Fabby, and the only recourse the fact that I'm KFO genius, gets to. Like... Stop doing that. Arrow goes to OQ. <laughs> that gives them time to take down the oh AD. Oh my God! Hold <laughs> off Liquid. The 2-0. But then, like, the transition into LCS, like, I started seeing where my weaknesses lie. I didn't have any game knowledge. I'm learning more <laughs> and more every week, though. Bobby. I'm making my own calls, communicating with my team. Like, I've only been, like, in the LCS for five weeks, so there's still so much improvement to be done. He was doing but well, though. It's definitely looking better right now. I played a series with Fabi back in the day. When I first talked to Piglet, it was like, I love playing on TLA. They, I actually feel like I have a voice. Like It actually feels like they respect me and care about me, and they want to play with me. And he started getting kind of like, eh, I'm not really feeling this as much anymore. And so when I had my one-on-one -on -one with Piglet, it addressed that. Um, you know, The gist of it was, <laughs> Piglet, like, you're having a lot of issues with like communication. There must have been something that happened between weeks four and week seven, obviously, that made him just go from, I love this team, to I just want to retire. <laughs> I mean, you know you're really good. Uh, uh, so the life cycle of Piglet. So why not you be love a it. good player and a good leader? Right? No, I like that either. I think you're a leader. I, I think just, you have what it takes. You're, you're older than everyone on the team. Do uh, you know that? I am just... Um, 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 I'm just a player. Yeah. So I, I just address it as human. Uh, as possible and I just like like this team like constantly makes sacrifices for you if you're going to play on TLA you have to understand I don't think they're necessarily doing anything wrong with like the identity of like incorporating you into the team you know they didn't necessarily choose you to play with them because they had a fabby you came into TLA and we made that accommodation for you and we talked to the TLA members of that and he was so cringe. They oh, he did that all the time. Like that, I don't even. That didn't even phase me. That's just how he was. He liked being like that outside of the game. But then, like in game, he just had like this ma massive ego. It was crazy. And to make their sacrifice, knowing who you were as a player, but also just knowing who you were as a person, 
they wanted to play with you and they wanted to give you the environment that they thought you deserved. And I know you're a good ass player, right? Like one of the best, if not the best AD carry in the world, right? I, can you be the best teammate in the Dude, world? Dude, look at how much he loves hearing that shit. He's like, yeah, just tell me I'm the fucking best. Ah, oh, yeah, let me just roll around and bet. Yeah, I'm the fucking. Yeah, I'm just the fucking GOAT, bro. That's why I'm a world champion. Ugh. All right, and I'm playing on TLA. You love that shit. I think you can, but you have to make the sacrifice needed for that. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of it's attitude, right? Right? Uh, right? Do you think a lot of it comes down to attitude? Yeah. Okay. If, if like, if, if they, they bad, I don't care. Like, if they edit you good, I, I don't care. Even they, like, fucking bad team, even they, if they, like, just, like, challenge the team, and if they, like, just, like, Team. I don't care if they edit good, but if edit good, if edit it bad, like I care so much, like my feeling so bad, cause like just I only care attitude, attitude. So yeah, I don't. Right. We I'm like la love like roster, right? Mm -hmm. After that, and then they, they just like change something. So I can't like fucking fix them. Okay. You need to be able to talk, right? If you're upset, you still need to be able to communicate those things. Otherwise, he doesn't know what to do. Like, if I'm upset, like, if I talk more, mm -hmm. like, I'm just more, I get more angry mm -hmm. and more get upset. And that's just, boom. No, I, no excuses, no excuses. No, I just want this, you to promise me, can, so you, can you be strong? No, it's gonna be makes hard. me so angry, bro. So I can't I can't watch this again, bro. I, will you literally find, if you go back Rebirth Season 2, you can find me and Piglet in the same room talking about the same. I'll find uh, it for you guys. So I try, but I, I, like, not 100%. Okay, I want you to sit up and look at me, okay? Uh-huh. Okay, no, no, I want you, no whining, don't say. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, okay. I can't, I'm gonna get so Mad, bro. I can't. I can't look at this, shit, bro. Fuck, man. Such a monkey. The monkey. <laughs> 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 Sit up. Sit up and talk to me. Sit up and talk. Yo, to you me. guys should. Yeah, send him. You know. Sit up and talk to me. Okay? He sent me. He sent me. Monkey. Cute, cute monkey. Okay. You guys think I'm monkey? Or maybe. <laughs> Okay, sit up and talk to me. Oh, okay. why? I don't, I don't want to see if I see it, like, oh, like, I just need, more, I, I more need tired. To, I need Same room, here we are, here we are. This is me and Piglet hashing it out. This is the way I play, which is, like, the main reason why I feel like we succeeded this week is uh, I had, like, freedom. Okay, so we benched Piglet for a week, right? We absolutely smurfed. They made a deal with me. Yo, if you, like, look, you got a tough-ass week. They didn't think we were going to win. We played against, like, TSM and CLG, who are the two best teams. We had the same discussion in the same room. They're like, okay, look, you don't want to play with Piglet. You're the captain. We'll bench Piglet for a fucking week. If you guys do well, you know, then we'll keep on playing with the roster. You got Keith McBree first TSM and CLG. We 2 owed beat both of them. They're like, yeah, Piglet's coming back, bro. Like, come on. We're not going to bench fucking Piglet. <laughs> like, oh, I'm so triggered. So you can promise. And so our conversation so was kind of just back and forth until he, until he kind of, and I think you were there too, until he kind of realized and agreed yeah, I should give it another chance and I should make more sacrifices for a team that's constantly been accommodating me and sacrificing for me. You work and fix. I got two rounds. I got Promise me that you will work on your attitude. Mm, but sometimes I, I'm getting upset. I know. Uh, maybe not sometimes, like. Right? Maybe a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. I know. A lot of times. I know. I know. But can you promise that you will work on yeah, it? Yeah, I try, like. Okay, I can try it. Okay. Yeah, I try. Uh, change my attitude and then like but I just get up there too much like. right so yeah that's why we bought you so many bottles of chummy so oh I should oh I should do it today <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> alright take it easy though okay alright do you promise though yes yes okay I promise I work with you too okay uh -huh. okay alright tomorrow I know that you have scrims and stuff, so... Up top is the dive. Oh, yeah, Moon dives. Arnf Legendary will go down. Ooh. Popper takes a lot, but so too... And For Ian versus to Enix. Two to zero Wait, over what's Enix? Enix? In a very Equinox? Wait, what the f*** type of team is that? Enix. Have just secured...
We didn't have the best week of practice for sure, but really good way to end out the season. We have in, we have six days until playoffs. Dalla pulls Coop back in, and Team Liquid Academy are cleaning up with three kills, and they're not going for the Dragon. They're heading towards the Baron. Team Liquid Academy, two to zero so far. Will go mid, knocks into a Blaze Olive for a lot of damage. First blood, Golden Glue. And hops over the Nexus, but the Nexus turrets are going down, and Team Liquid Academy will take the series and advance to the Challenger Series Finals. We're a playmaking team. We either dominate them or we play slow and it's not how we play. Or we get dominated. Look to dominate. Look to dominate. I will dominate. Perfect. We did it. One, two, three. Equalizer tries to reset the Cloud9 challenger. Could be looking to take this game here and now they drop on the Nexus towards themselves. We're going at game three as Team Liquid Academy take game two over Cloud9. He gets disappeared by Cloud9 challengers. They pick up four kills. Solo the sole survivor will watch the Nexus fall. But they do oh, not no. stand a chance. Team Liquid Academy even it up. And we are going to game five. He's going to be the pick. And Ramis. What? Hold the phone. Last second timer. Piglet is such a fucking griefer, bro. He he randomly locked Ramis and Stun had to play it as support. Bro, he is such a fucking griefer. I can't believe it. Motherfucker locked in Ramis in game five and was like, yeah, bro, I guess you just gotta fucking play Ramis support. Like, I don't know. Like, it is it is what it is. Well, you don't play Ramis? Like, look, if you're a good player, you can make it work. This guy is a griefer. North American Challenger Series. The fucking Ramis incident. As they take the Nexus and defeat Team Liquid Academy. Team Liquid Academy is going to have to play the 10th place team as well as the 9th place team in best of fives in order to qualify. So much tougher he missed his road pick, from them so random in that Ramis. regard. But uh, they can still do it, right? It's, they, it's they, like they just locked in, in Ramis randomly. The thing That's with me and Sam's relationship is I'm in a high stress environment with my best friend and I want to see him continue to be you my flame best the friend. And also guy. my co-worker. So when Samson is severely underperforming as one of the worst top laners in North American LCS, I'm obviously- God damn, why are you doing him like this? For what, bro? For what? Obviously going to tell him that I'm not gonna go up to him and be like, hey bud, you're doing a real great job out there. Keep it up. I'm gonna be like, yeah, dude, you're shit. You gotta, you gotta pick it up or you're gonna get benched. And that's what I told him every time he underperformed. <laughs> and he's it's so several. miserable being Lorlo. Oh, I feel bad for Lorlo, man. I I introduced him into fucking hell. So I met him in solo queue. He had a fucking random ID that was like SKTT1 Smeb, and he was playing just like Fiora and Nidalee in NA solo queue. He was top ten. And when Quas had like that breakdown, I just like asked for him to join the team. Like I literally scouted him, and then he joined the team because I was a I was a starting juggler at that point. And then he just had to play with Dardock the whole year. He's just getting fucking. Shit on, yo, bro, you're fucking shit. You're gonna get benched. Like, that's what he gets. I ruined his life. Times had said, thank you for making me the player who I am today. Samson's had tons of improvements, and he said he he holds me responsible for a lot of his improvement. And if I could go back and no talk to him just wait, I'd that's actually so to good. That's so I good. No bitches. And he always fixes it. And there's a matter of harsh criticism, and there's a matter of people who take harsh criticism well, and I think Samson really adapted. I think hearing it from his close friend helped him a lot. He's definitely like another brother to me. And in the past eight months, he's changed me for better and for worse. Like I poured my emotions into the team and to him. Like, yeah, we grinded things together. We worked on our problems together. We improved as a duo together. Sassy? I don't know what to get <sighs> No. Dardock, big zero. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Someone messed up 2v1, I guess. I don't know. Well, I mean, speaking of who would mess up a 2v1, Lorlo. <laughs> I don't know. What is that? Actually, like, oh, oh, man, that's their relationship. <laughs> I think just having someone to yeah, just like, rely on, just like always have someone like, yeah, let's go to 7-Eleven together. Let's go to Cheesecake. Just have like, like, the guy that I can go with somewhere without having like be stressed out around him because like he knows everything about me. I know everything about him. So it's always nice to have someone that you honestly don't have to talk to him because you're just having a good time with him. It's cool with you, dude. His new album, 10 out of the night. I have no clue who this is. Prince White Boy. He only knows Tupac. He only knows Tupac. That's my boy. You don't know Schoolboy Q? Drake. Me, no Kanye. Kanye. 
jackpot. Oh, I just want us to go crazy to today. These guys 2v2. When are we lost them? <laughs> we can't throw our lead. You guys have actually never lost them 2v2 opening of the game. We never lose 2v2 to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> We've got six months of synergy, dude. <laughs> six months of in and IRL synergy. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's closer than me and Sam. God damn, that's some. All right, you made it weird, Nick. You made it weird. That doesn't even count. They talk to each other. Oh wait, nice. I'm just gonna get fucking banned on Twitch. Get DMC8 for this. Shit. Perfect. Can't wait. Do I tweet the, the picture of me and Sam? And the caption is Apex is fucking free or what? I'd say he just, no. He just tweeted, prepare your cheese. Oh, we get Which insinuates that they need to cheese us. To You've win. already oh, tweeted that. It's free. important. You you already tweeted that, Sam? No, you don't shit talk people that are like easily worse that, than that, you. You, gotta you shit talk yeah. the better people. Yeah, but they've yeah. talked us before. Just look at yeah. the tweet. Yeah. Just re just retweet their tree and no, just no, be no. like free yeah. I gotta make my own. I gotta hype this match, you know. Oh yeah. For us, I think we have a lot of things to work on still, and like we're all like still putting in a lot of work. And I think at the end of the day, Liquid will have like a really good shot of making work. So playing it pretty still well. Still getting dove. There's an ulti in. Ray gonna get taken down, oh. and first blood goes to Dardog. Ooh, unlucky. That's rough. Just out of the way, Shrimp. Not tanking up, but that ulti might be enough. No, not there in time. The rest special. Of Liquid have cut Apex off right down the middle. Two levels. That is huge here in this jungle priority, and they're trying to force fights. He does get it. They're looking for the initiation. Shrimp, big ulti finds Fabi and uh -oh. that huge win from Kane as well. The combo and oh Apex. My God. They find the miracle team by a 4 0 win. Oh, Shrimp gonna be late, but Kane's down here as well. Apex looking to turn things around. Spears gonna miss, but the ulti's down. Huge amount of damage is special. Takes out Matt. That's one as well for Kane as he slays Dardock and Lolo eats a spear for another. No one's listening to my calls, and then it's a mix of just people trying to do their own thing. Trying to get Fabi, and they will get him, but there's a good ulti. Lolo now the target is special. Knocks him up as well, but Phoenix still alive, and now Apollo finally takes him out. King did die, but Apex going to clean up another team fight. What a series from Apex. No one would have expected them to take down Liquid. This was supposed to be the easy match for Liquid. They're supposed to take this series, move on to fight C9 tomorrow, but Holy. Apex has other plans and keep their playoff hopes alive. Certainly looking good as they'll take the Nexus in game three and collect Holy the upsets. I mean, there's probably a lot of things that everyone wants to say, and the same thing as always, right after we lose, there, if we don't have any replay, if we don't have anything, <laughs> and we just go like, oh, someone should have done this, someone should have done this, it becomes useless emotional arguing. We're gonna go do fan interaction, take a short break, go back home, go through the games. We can still get really ideal situation out of this. If C9... No, we're locked in fourth, and then we actually have to play the game now. So, just stop. We just gotta... Fans in two, okay? Stop let's get good. Who cares about C9 at this point? We lost this game. Like, like, third or fourth, fifth, sixth, doesn't even matter. Let's just get good so we beat every team. I don't know. It's just like... It, like, we either get good at playing the 5v5 game, or we draft towards the f***ing jungle 1v9. So I'm the only like real consistent player that, that we have right now. Like everyone is- God damn bro, I can't imagine saying this dude. Oh my God, respect. Bro, like let's be honest dude. Like sure, we either like magically have you motherfuckers become useful, not happening, or I just carried the game alone. Cause it's me bro, Mamba mentality. Let's go, draft me fucking Rengar and shut your fucking mouth. Don't even talk to me and piss me off in the fucking game or I'm not gonna be able to fucking carry you. God damn. It's really inconsistent. And we're just losing games straight up because we're drafting towards 5v5 and we don't have five strong members. Damn, like but you guys just suck. Dealing, like when I'm full f***ing tank rec side, dealing more damage than two f***ing AoE carries, like that's not acceptable whatsoever. Like this is like, it, it's actually just sad, dude. Oh, it's just like, it's so f***ing embarrassing. All right, let's go do fans and then we can talk afterwards. I'm not going to fans. I'm just showing you. The fans. Right. I mean, we gotta do fans. The fans. Send four people. You heard me. It's unfortunate, but we've done it before. It's unfortunate we have to send four people, but I just don't fucking care. Literally, the fans could go f themselves. I think it's a good idea. I mean, we I should know, no, like, I'm just being completely serious. Like, I, I'm not in, in the fans right now. I think just cancel is cool. Some teams sometimes they live in there. Nick, you're called. We send four people. All right, let's go, gang. Everyone else is too tilted, dude. 
They played perfect. Gardo played perfect. Oh, there's my mom. Deserves to be here. <laughs> listen to listen to Fabi. He's such a troll. Look at his face, bro. I love this guy. This guy is so fucking funny. My family. Oh. Right there. We had the freest road to Toronto. All we, we did. did. No, I absolutely. We had last team. week. We had a two zero last week. We need to be fucking clown apex and fucking clown nine. Yeah. And then we have envy and fucking semi final. And then we just go to semi finals for free. Yeah. And we play and against the team that we beat in scrims all the time. Fucking immortals. Like, what the? Fuck? Yeah. We legit had the freest run to finals ever. Yeah. And I mean, we can take that frustration. Even freer than the last one. What the? Fuck? No, absolutely. But we can take that and we can just look at the next three weeks and say, like, do we give up now and do we just look forward to the next split or do we try to Maybe we like just on ignore more. the fact that uh, we're focused too hard on wanting to win and maybe we're just not good enough to win. We never put that one out there. Are we good enough to be in this league? Do we deserve to be here? Is our skill high enough to be in this league? That's crazy, bro. That's so crazy. Jesus, man, this guy is just, he's next level. I don't very often like sit down and talk directly with the players. A lot of the coaching staff manage and do that most of the time. So it's a, it's a little like uh, different for the player to be like, oh wow, the owner's coming over to me and he's gonna have to have a talk with me right before the game starts. So I just wanted to get an idea of where his mindset was. Kind of reassure myself that he was going into the last week and he was ready to play. You've been doing some things that haven't been great, right? Yeah. You've been uh, on LCS days in game. You've been kind of saying things that you shouldn't be saying during the game that's not very good for like team morale. Uh, hmm. It's kind of hurting the way the people, the players play the game and we're, we're not increasing our odds of winning because of that match because of the things that you're saying in game. The coaching staff doesn't want to work with you. Um, they feel like it's a really unprofessional, unhealthy work environment. Obviously, from a business standpoint, I have to, I'm have i paying all of their salaries, plus Loco's salary, plus your salary, plus like Piglet's salary that you know didn't want, you guys had your issue as well. I am investing a ton of money, so it's extremely costly for me to run a business where I'm investing into things and then they want to just like quit because of the environment that's being created. As a businessman, like I can't do that. I can't put all that money and resources into something that's not working. When it comes to dealing with Dardock, I try to pick the battles the right way. I know a lot of times when it gets heated, talking Jesus. to him is not going to work. I think after like counseling and summer and all the things with Jordan and Loco counseling. and my time and then hiring an assistant coach and all this stuff, it's just all, not all working. All those things, they all, did, they all did the opposite of help, actually. Like, talking to Loco definitely doesn't help. I think that the team environment is not just a, I hate that everything is just put right onto me, like, I'm well, the Well, no, no, here, here's the thing. There are, no, no, listen, listen, there are other things that are going on, what trust me. Fuck, hey, don't say that to me. Well, like, at the very least. You just, like, cut me off in the middle of the conversation. No, no. Like, in the middle of my point. You kind of just have to let him. God, imagine, dude, I can't, I couldn't believe this. He's 17 and he's, and that's like his owner. That's the team owner. I could never, dude, I could never do this shit. Respect, honestly. I would never be able to, I would be like, oh shit, my bad, dude. Like I'll try to behave better. I mean, I had one-on-ones with Steve before and stuff. Like I was never, I could never do this shit. I was like 24, 25, I could not do this. Like I could not blatantly disrespect somebody who didn't deserve it to their face. Like I, I've never been able to just do that shit mull over it and let off some steam whether that's, that's him crazy. like venting a little bit if you're gonna give me a bottom lane that's playing at like a diamond five level that's absolutely unacceptable and then you're coming to me telling me that my attitude's a problem when he's not even putting forth uh, i think level. the degree of effort yes maybe that's the something degree that we look of effort, at, and how but... am i supposed to meet that with it's okay guys we can still win it's okay guys they all yeah. underperformed. Fabi had a, a very small time where he was performing right. really well, and then he got complacent and lazy, and now look where he's at. He's getting smashed by Apollo and Expecial. Yeah. Apollo and Expecial. I think that there's definitely valid points to that. I think that we need to make greater strides. I don't think that you can say that I've made all this progress, and now I get to then still have some issues in game. Like, I should hold you accountable to a higher standard so that at least the the issues that we have, I don't have to worry about focusing my energy with you. Instead, your actions are making me 
put energy and resources into this when I, it could go somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. I so understand. why not become the best athlete, not just a better athlete than you were athlete six months ago? When you look at like the outside picture and you understand like the fucking weight of that game and that set yesterday on me, especially, I want Worlds more than any player on this team. I don't give a who they are. I don't care about local. I don't care about Phoenix. I want this more than anyone. I put forth way more effort. I put all my life into this. I can sacrifice so much. I left my normal life. I sacrificed school. I dropped out of high school to move out here and play this video game professionally. And I expected professionalism and hard work from my teammates. And that set, I expect the same thing. I that said, if we win and we go 2-0, we 2-0 today, we're worlds. Fucking bound for worlds. No chance. I would. And when I'm met with that level of play, and all I say is that the game's over. That is. Honestly, that that's an A plus. Honestly, from my point of view, because what I wanted to say is, I want to quit the game. I don't want to play on the stage with these underperforming players. I love the passion, <laughs> Josh. Honestly, I, I get it. You know, it gets me fired. I up. love the passion, buddy. I love I love where you're coming from, but we've got to refocus our efforts on what is important. I love it. Okay. Jesus. The only I'm... things are in-game stuff and. We've got to make a better effort on some of this stuff. Let me handle the things with our bot lane, okay? And I'll put my effort there. I got it. Okay, buddy. All right. I want nothing more than, than to win, but I do too. It just gets overwhelming sometimes. All right, let's go. Liquid, hope you forget it ever happened. Cloud Nine. Steve is a fucking monk, bro. Steve is a. Buddhist monk on the top of a mountain. He is chilling. The call not going to mean anything. Medios box in says, "Don't you dare! I'm a fat man and knock this down a 2-0, 36 minute game." Like we have the ability to bump that if we all take it. You can use the Cinderella story. Okay. The CLG was a Cinderella story last split, and there's there've been a lot of teams that go from fucking awful seeding and awful regular split, and then just run the whole thing. So I think we can do it as well. I'm just. On Think about we take sets off. effort, the amount of effort you put in is the result we get. I feel like for every single one of you guys, when Bro, you guys it was didn't so put in much effort, different. you guys played like shit. And when you guys put in a lot of effort, you guys all, you guys played well. I'm not talking about as a team, but as individual performance. Your performance directly correlates with your effort. Yeah. And how seriously you take it. Dude, I don't even know if I should say this, but like, the, dude, Steve has had to have, have so many talking tos with so many different people. I remember like... There was a time he had to get the house together in like season three. This was like right after I joined the, the curse house and he had to get the whole house together because I was banned that season. But like I moved in early because they're pretty much they're pretty much grooming me to be the 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 LCS jungler for the next year. I was banned, but I was like going to take St. Vicious's spot. So like I just lived with them for the whole year and I was just involved with, with the team and whatever. And I remember like he brought us he brought us all downstairs and he's like, guys, all right, everyone. Look, we need to all stop saying the F slur so much. We can't say that word that rhymes with maggot. We can't say that word anymore. Like we are saying it all day. Everyone in this house is just saying that shit all the time. We are going to get fucking canceled and removed from this league. Like we, we got to stop saying it. That was literally how it was, bro. Coming from like coming to like gamers in like fucking 2013. That was actually the, the conversations we need to have. We, we actually had to have. Like, guys, we just can't be saying this all the time. <laughs> like, we're like, come on, man. Come on. Really? Like, really? We can't say that anymore, man? Like, dude, we don't even mean it like that. Like, that, that was literally, I remember being like, dude, this is how the fucking community and this is how, like, the internet was back then. People don't understand. Like, if you were, a, if you played video games on voice comms, you grew up playing that shit. That was just like a word that you like didn't even think about like that. You didn't even think about it as like that type of it. Like you thought about it as like, oh, I'm just trying to like talk this guy. I just like call him that. Like that's how it was. Man, it was fucking insane back then. Like the, the conversations we had to have. Dude, Steve had to die. Steve had to be like, guys, please, please. Like I'm trying to get us fucking sponsors. Can we stop saying it, please? It affects it a lot. I mean, what's left on stage is how much effort you guys put in. Like if you're proud of your performance if you're happy with how much effort you put in then you're going to get the kind of performance that you deserve and if you're disappointed on stage and if you have regrets that means it has to do something with the effort you put in that week be honest with yourself and think about how much effort you put in and if you're really satisfied and think about what you can change for playoff oh dumb i mean yeah i mean pretty much like that was old everyone if you just grew up on the internet, like, that's just like, yeah, I don't know. Not saying it was right. I'm just saying that that's like, 
it was just common in gamer houses exactly and for, for people to use that word bro there's a video from from 2012 there's a video of a vlog where tsm is just talking and reginald just says that word like four times in the vlog publicly just like puts it out and they had it on their channel up until like 2020 when thorin just like necroed that shit. thorin just brought that shit, but like that is literally like how everyone talked Oh, biggest thing. I don't care what Reddit says, I don't care what Twitter says. This is not Solo versus KFO. This is not Piglet versus Keith. This is not TLA versus Echo Fox. Frogman versus Colting Blue, I guess. It's yeah. TLA versus Echo Fox, okay? Got me. I didn't think we needed it. The big old big old coffee so, so be careful. No. <laughs> Bro, KF KFO just played one season in NA and then just never played professionally again. DLA, I'll throw on you. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, DLA! <laughs> but Stun follows up. Exhaust looking for first blood. Knockout teleport. Golden Glue gets it. Hard, meanwhile, misses the fat flash. He's going to try to turn it around, but five members of Team Liquid Academy participate now. Does not have the Mega Nar slam. Oh, he drops the wall up late. KFO under the turret is stunned. Solo, solo kills. Solo comes up big there. Oh, <laughs> that player cam. The flex there from Solo after the play. <laughs> TLA, they're very confident in this match. The second oh, yeah. break is secured by oh, Moon. Fox. Moon tries to engage the cask, separates them back. Piglet goes in, trying to drop the AoE. Big will be the first to fall. Solo misses the first stun, but finds the second. KFO teleports in, looking for stun in the back line, but cannot find it. As Team Liquid Academy are cleaning this fight up, KFO will get one kill in return. Boomerang lands, and the stun follows it up. They have caught him. That is a dead Soraka. And that's just stun playing really well on that Tarek. He didn't even flash on that first one. He got the flash out of Keith, and then the barrel from Moon to separate the Soraka? Is an interesting choice. Solo Dom's best friend. Only real ones know the fucking beef. But he had full confidence that they were going to catch him after the boomerang landed. And Piglet. Oh, the <laughs> pops up just in time to get the kill. Now Froggen completes his teleport. So much regret. <laughs> so much regret. I, he didn't know. He didn't know. Down. Piglet is running for his life. Does Piglet have the plays? No, he does not. Froggen kills him. Moon is going to be the last person here. There goes the point rush, and it is not enough. It's nothing to deal with the damage. And Echo Fox might have done it. They scare away the rest. Keith even dropping a bit of BM as he drops into the Nexus. Really close series. Really close series. It sucks a lot. And I know all of us signed here with one goal, it was to win. And unfortunately, we didn't win enough. I'm truly sorry for that. Know that every single one of you has improved a lot. And no matter where your paths go, where you, whether you stay with us or look to seek other options or whatever happens, I know that this was a stepping stone into reaching higher achievements for your career. I know a lot of you guys improved. <laughs> None of your guys' careers are gonna go down from here. You can only go up from here. And again, I'm really sorry for today's loss. It really sucks. I mean, it ended up being true, to be honest. All these players made it into LCS. So like uh, Moon was in LCS the next year with FlyQuest, um, I believe. And then you had Solo who ended up making LCS. It actually was true for the entire team. They all made LCS after this. No, it's not. It's I don't even know why people are spamming Copium or some random shit. Like all their careers were better than this at a point afterwards. Like at least they made it to the next level. None of them stayed in Academy for the rest of their lives. Like a lot of them made it to the next level. Making it into LCS, bro. It's not as easy as you motherfuckers think. <laughs> you, got, you try to go make LCS. It's just not that easy. If you told me a year ago that Piglet would play in Piglet, Yeah, Piglet played in LCS. The next year he played with the main team. And then after that, he played with Clutch. I mean, obviously it's like, he's never gonna win worlds again. So, I mean, it's never gonna go up from the highest point that ever, that it, like he ever achieved, but it went up from at that moment. I would not believe you. He went from one game away from competing for the finals to playing in Challenger and really enjoying playing the game, having his teammates going for one goal. And I felt like Piglet's development was so much further along and him being a leader and him just being able to trust his teammates and be a full team player. 
David is my friend and David is my coach. If I get stressed, like he, I just talk to him. I need, need I need this, this, this. So he just try picks. Yeah, I just want want him. I want want David talk to him. Everything David doing good. Is. Off to Korea. You know, he low key enjoyed this. Sh you know how nice it was for him? Imagine, like, you know, you're going to get into LCS again next year. Like, he already knew he was going to be playing on the main team again next year. Gets fing rain over as jungler who, like, he thought was going to be really good. And he literally, at this point, this was probably like early August, he literally gets like five months vacation. Like all of August, all of September, all of October, all of November, <laughs> all of December, and then like part of January. You get like half the year off to just go like chill, play solo queue, get drunk with your friends in Korea. Like he was chilling. I honestly don't feel bad for like people that, that lose an LCS. Like if you lose an LCS in spring and summer, like as fast as possible, you literally get like eight months off a year paid. You're chilling. Goes in, but he gets stopped by Smithy. Hui stuns two in the back line. And Darshan still coming in. Great old there from Gragas. And Hui's getting low. Phoenix does manage to take him down. But he is going to get the counter kill onto Phoenix. DLG still fighting forward. Low, low, low. Two man ulti from Darshan's going to seal the fate of two more members of TL and Do not look for a perfect team fight. You guys aren't going to get the perfect team fight. You guys are going to get decent engagement. And everyone's going to be on the same page. Dardock and Sam know what kind of fights you want to look for. And we're just going to follow through on the engages. Regardless if you guys think that it's good or not, okay? The engagers are gonna f engage and we're gonna follow through on the engage and we're gonna f smash them because they're shit here at team fighting because they're garbage, okay? <laughs> yeah, and they're, and they're ugly. And they're ugly and they're fing made of this. Is gonna start to go wild in the base of Team Liquid. Nexus, hopefully though, it's gonna go down. And a chaotic ends the game to CLG up 2-0. I'm just, uh, whatever. Just pick me whatever. It's just fine. Go off, but there's no orders to follow. Data going back in again. It's Smithy gonna get tagged for the rest of CLG's here. Stick safe. Just crits his face off as Tuhi gets an ulti out for a bit of burst damage. Jin's caught out. Matt's gonna die. Sivan now with a double kill. CLG bursting forward. Phoenix gets the ulti, but 6 a wants more. There's the triple kill. Looking to chase it down. Lolo, no way good to run. 6 a there's the quadra kill. Jin's the only one left alive with one flash. <laughs> they can do it. He said it. CLG show that while Team Liquid's talent just may peace. be undeniable, their poise is unbreakable. 26 minutes in. That's gonna wrap it up. Who the f is Jinth? Bro, he was like an Ash one trick from solo queue. No one knew who the f Jinth was, bro. <laughs> Jinth and then Arc second joined with some random guys. From the last game of the season to the start of the gauntlet, we had about three and a half weeks in order to prepare for those matches to give our last kind of shot in order to get into Worlds. In a holistic team view, you want to make sure that the health and mentality of the other four players are up to snuff too. And so we nope. made that decision with the other players in mind. We wanted to give them uh, kind of room to excel without feeling like someone is breathing down their throat on every single mistake that they make. Nobody wants to go to Worlds more than me, says Dardock. Also Dardock, let's just lose in peace. Yeah, so imagine how little his teammates wanted to win when he, he wanted to lose in peace and his teammates wanted to, to lose even more than that. That's crazy. We thought, okay, if we continue as is, and we've just had the recent result of the last two weeks, we go into the gauntlet, can we fix those issues over these next three weeks? Or is it better to just kind of shake things up and try something completely new? <laughs> they wanted to lose in violence. Yeah, they wanted to lose in just the fucking complete shit show. <laughs> I was just like chilling on my computer, just playing. Losing hostility. Back in the old days, I guess. So, 
and then I just messaged Joshua so I'm online like hey what's up and he's like I'm off the team he's that's like he just blatantly said that to me like wait you're trolling right because I'm like used to him just messing around with me like of course he has to be trolling right I'm like he's I'm like really question mark and he's like no I'm really gone this time I'm like okay yeah after I went downstairs he was just like playing solo key like usual I'm like are you leaving tonight he's like yeah I'm uh, okay, so like I, I asked him if he needed help packing. He said he already packed, and then I walked him out to the car. He met his new Echo Fox manager. That was pretty. It was probably one of the saddest days of my life, to be honest. After he left, it was about like nine o'clock. I mm -hmm. went up to the roof. I was just like messaging my girlfriend a little. Bro, you can, can kind of tell. You can kind of tell it was it was a little hood out here. Roof. I was just like. It was, it was literally like don't walk around at night over here this is my Straight good up. friend named ben i was like talking about like everything i also my friend ben. i messaged loco and then loco came up and he just talked to me about the good but also the bad and it was just a long night of definitely a lot of crying probably one of the most depressing sad nights of my life it was really really hard hey any offer I get is, is, is fortunate, like I'm blessed to get it, so I'm gonna take whatever I can get. And at the moment, all I had was Echo Fox, so I instantly went on board and tried to prove that I changed. Who filmed this? Damien. Damien Estrada. Damien Estrada was the man, bro. He filmed uh, Rebirth, too. Mad how these guys are all like 17 to 19 Let's during this? Yeah, really uh, Lorlo was 17, or maybe he turned 18 during this year. We bring in somebody that maybe doesn't really know how to play jungle in his role, but is the number one rank in North America on the ladder, obviously has a lot of mechanical skill. Can we teach him as much as we possibly can about the top jungle picks and kind of the rotational macro game over those three weeks and let's see how he performs. In my head, I thought, probably a pretty good shot. So let's talk to Ark second and find out what his mindset is. Ain't it no was way. to just make sure that we had a really productive three and a half weeks leading into the gauntlet rather than kind of more of the same issues that were existing between Josh and the coaching staff. here to qualify our third and final <laughs> team to world team liquid has kind for of the gauntlet they saw for us they couldn't even Envy do it one more time for the gauntlet maybe getting a little bit of a boon from the fact that team liquid is in a bit of disarray. look at this motherfucker, bro he literally looks like he snuck up on the stage it's like who is this guy bro like you normally know the players that are coming into lcs but jim just snuck his ass up on stage look at look at how he looks at the camera bit of a boon from the he's like uh yo yo am i supposed to be up here like just don't tell anyone bro just don't tell anyone. The fact that Team Liquid is in a bit of disarray. Before all this stuff happened with like the roster changes, you would think that Liquid are the favorites coming into it. Now, Envy are definitely the favorites coming into it against Liquid, who have a substitute jungler who has never played jungle before professionally in any capacity. I mean, the guy, Arc Second, is number one on the ladder, but as a mid laner. Arc Second is gonna make his debut. Flash, he could. Doesn't go for the outplay. There's the auto attack. There's first blood. Arc Second is gonna show up. And it's gonna be nice for Liquid. They're the first kill coming through for the new jungle. No, they're gonna go back in for this one. Try to burn him down. E3, E3. Wow, Liquid pulling the trigger. Okay, okay, you got it. Nice, nice, nice. Push away, push away, push away. Pushing, pushing, I'm pushing. I'm pushing. Nice, good shit, good shit. Push it, push the wave. I think we come all, come all, come all. Right side, right side. I'm being ulted, I'm being ulted. <laughs> I'm being ulted. Nice. Nice, good job, good job. Good job, good job. No, 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 just push, just push. Alright, I'm pretty sure we just won the fucking game. Jin on dragon, Jin on dragon. Okay, fine. Phoenix, we kill casting, okay? Keep going, keep going. I'm on game, I'm on game. I'm gonna be on all range. I'm gonna be on all range and fun. No flash, Mel's heart. I'm coming to Mel's, I'm coming to Mel's. I can ult. Oh, he's dead, he's dead. Dibbit's behind us. Oh, look for, look for, look for Sarah. Rex, look for Sarah. Look, Kassin, look, Kassin, 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 Kassin. He has flash. I, 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 Uh, Sarah, uh, Rex has Rex has Back up. Keep running, keep running. I'm on a server. Can't help. I think he's got a hold. Just as soon as he respawns into the chain, he's seeing a deja vu. 
through. Arc seconds gone as fast as the name implies. And now Phoenix has to run away as his teammates are all dying around him. It's a 5v2 as Envy are going to look to uh, close out the first game of the series close. in a pretty incredible comeback win. Seraph playing his 20th champion of the split, the Cassidy. Pretty instrumental in the win as Phoenix running out of HP. A quick trade kill comes in for the It's really obvious that after like nine months of work that your emotions just build up to the last result. No, it's not that only that just whole game. After all the game, they just shut down their mouth. This is the last run we have for Worlds and it's like the last tournament we had to play for like the end of the season. So even myself, like I had a ton of pent up emotions built up and I know Phoenix did. They don't have any plan and they just, I don't know what, it, we just playing like normal game couldn't control him at the end and just lashed out on the new rookies and also just the team in general because he was frustrated that we couldn't Damn even bro, imagine like these desperate. guys that came straight from solo queue and then they're just getting flamed by Phoenix. They're like, I literally don't play this role. I'm a mid lane fucking Diana one trick and you have me playing jungle in LCS gauntlet. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, bro. Like I literally don't know what to do. Stop flaming me. Pretty disappointing for not only myself, but for Liquid Org in general. I think that it's really important that if you see people are shutting down and people are talking, you talk to them and you're like, yo guys, we can still win this, we can do this. And then you give them clear objective and clear plans on what they can do to execute if you think people aren't coming up with their own plans. I can see his frustration, it's definitely acceptable, but after my nine months of like hard work and just ending up getting three out, it's definitely like a heartbreaker. If you don't want to be on Sivir, then we can use the last ban on Sivir because he's willing to play Relia into Kennen, and then you can be Jin instead. Would you rather do that? I mean, I can take Sivir too. I mean, All right, which one would you prefer, Phil? I don't really have a preference. Okay. I prefer Jin over Sivir. All right. Then <laughs> what the f bro? What? Yes, you do. That, okay. Like, I don't have a preference. All I'm saying is I'd rather play Jin. And Phoenix, you stay. Phoenix, if you really want to win this series, instead of blaming picks, let's talk about what we can fix. And even if you do think picks are problematic, you can say it in a much more productive way. Yeah, I say fucking picks problem. Mm -hmm. They just fucking, I just play fucking normal game. We did voice chat with some random guys. They just after all the game, they just do nothing. Oh, I do this, I do this. They just doesn't have any plan. They just fucking just shut they don't know what to do they just shut down if they don't know what to do then we can help them in game Wait, how i say five men i think saying something simple like yo guys um i want to get side lane priority can you help can you push up mid is something really helpful that you can tell them they just close your mouth because i know you're frustrated and i know they're closing their mouth instead of us yelling at them why aren't you guys talking like you guys can do this really easily like this is so simple it doesn't really help the problem but if you can talk to them where it's motivating and tell them what to do and help them talk, I think that would be a better solution than being angry at them. Not being angry at them, they... Okay, yeah, if they don't know, they if they say something, I can say, but they just say nothing. Yeah, you're saying nothing because they don't know what to say and also... Because they're literally fucking noobs, bro. You're playing with people that don't know what the fuck they're doing. You're not playing with LCS players. You would have had a better shot if you... If I literally hadn't played the whole year and I just went, like, from fucking playing solo queue, to just joining this team for for summer for like this last week it would have went better 100 percent like it just is what it is like you you don't have people that are fucking lcs players playing their roles you have auto filled people they don't know what the fuck to say they don't they're just scared to even be there they are shitting their pants bro imagine it's not just that they've never played like before in front of a crowd before they're playing They've never played LCS before. They've never they never played competition before. They weren't even playing like amateur online tournaments. They were playing nothing. It's crazy. You feel a lot less comfortable on stage than you. You've been playing longer and you're a better player and you have more experience than them. So I just make them just open their mouth. I think you did a decent job of making them open their mouth, but we can even do a better job. We can put confidence in them instead of telling them, just talk, just talk. Like, why aren't you guys talking? I think going with that approach, is gonna shut them down more, especially Matt. I think Matt's the one that's having the hardest time talk. Not, not talking is from lack of confidence. So when we're angry at him and we're like, you can just say this, you should just say this, then it makes them more likely to talk less, not more. Yeah, I know you just pick by the poor giving confidence. I gave the free choice of we can, I said either Trundle or Bard, it's up to you, Matt. And you say Bard is fine. I th you know, we like lose every Bard game and we have every Every Sorry, we'll yeah, we, have, we have every same problem to bad game, but this is already seven. 
Seven times in a row. I definitely agree. And I much <laughs> He's handle, so but boomed, bro. That can bro, that's Piglet. my boy. I hate it. I, I hate seeing him like this, bro. Phoenix was legit just ruined by Piglet. I swear this guy would have thrived so hard if he just never played with Piglet. Like, if he just joined our team and we still had Cop or something, he would have been like the fucking go to LCS or something. He was by far the best later. It like, wasn't even close. Like, in terms of just raw mechanics, trading, like, he just had zero brain. Like, he couldn't ward. He couldn't side lane. But he could just, like, lane for somebody else, get the CS, and, like, fuck the other guy 1v1. That's what this guy could do. ...to do, and he has to feel confident in it. There are certain limitations with certain players. <sighs> All right, let's look for something. After Mega, go, after Mega goes out, we engage, okay? That's what we're looking for. So they're just gonna get three nims. Yeah, and we can't defend. It's hard. We have to wait for Mega. Alright, hopefully we pull a wild turtle. We're gonna pin a kill on Jinx. Oh, I can see it. We have yeah, Venus kill Vu, baby. Bro, this is content right here. Yeah, this is an awesome me. documentary. Damien's a beast. Alright, top lane is coming to us. I'm gonna go push up bot. They're back here right now. They're just gonna do dragon. They're pretty camp. I can ward dragon. I'm not sure to come if I do this, but I'm gonna go. You're okay. Nice wraith camps out. I retired in January of this year, so I actually played like the entire offseason with TL. And then, um, like, I even played the first game of 2016 with them, and then I retired after that because they wanted me to play one more game because I, like, told them I wanted to retire, and they are like, dude, you always love playing on stage. Just play, like, one final game on stage to see if you really want to retire. I played that one game on stage. I was like, yep, I'm good. Peace. Oh, Red's up. Looks like all their summoners are up. Just gotta look yeah, for... My Zap does, like, engage as soon as they go. Oh, shit. Yeah. They're gonna go on me. Oh, God. Nice. All right, I have Titanic. Yeah, we see two of them in base. We're red on Jinx. I'm coming. All right, wait for Meganar. The same thing. I look at Mega Rage, okay, but I don't think we can wait for it. We'll see. Yeah, wait. If we can wait, then we wait. If not, we have to just go with Mega Fight. Yeah, flash. Just, just watch Mega Flash. We're just gonna get. Oh shit! Yeah, we have to go. We have to go. Come on! Come on! Come on! Look, Cassio. I flash. I'm going to Cassio. I'm going to Cassio. Cassio. Let's go, Cass. I'm looking at Jin. I flash him. I want Gragas. You get him? Horror show, dude. The horror music. Being slow. Uh, that's game. Hey, man. Yo. The situation we were given was definitely a hard one. Like, going into Gauntlet versus teams that have been playing together for almost the entire split. Uh, with two rookies, one with role swap. Um, I think the expectations we set for ourselves, we, in scrim, sometimes we met them, sometimes we didn't. Our environment was good, our environment was bad, but we always put in effort. And I really like that everyone, like, even in like the darkest times where we lost Dardock, we lost Piglet, like we're still f***ing working at it. We lost Dom, um, yeah, I know. We scrimmed I know. more it was in tough. the last week than we ever did on a regular LCS week. We played more games per average per day, we reviewed more per day, we watched more clips per day, we reviewed more bots in the last two weeks than we did. And I did think we showed a lot of progress in terms of where we were and where we ended at. Results are definitely disappointing for everyone. I don't want you guys to beat yourself about it, but I don't also want you guys to be satisfied with like what we accomplished, because to be honest, we didn't accomplish a lot this split and not a lot this year. And overall, this split, like, I'm not satisfied with the results, but from the rookies, or from every player, I've been pretty satisfied with your growth and how much effort everyone put in. All right, let's go do fan interaction. <laughs> one last one. For the rebirth, for the rebirth. James Dorf here. For a rebirth, bro. It was still called rebirth back then. Come here, lemur. One, two, three. Liquid. Yeah, yeah. Like, Jin's had this experience. He's like, I am never, never in my fucking life am I ever, ever going to try to go pro again. Never, bro. He, this ruined his entire, like, he's like, I'll try it, bro. I'll try it. He did this. He was out.
I'm happy with some of the progress I've made in the jungle, but then like as actually a team, like all that matters is winning and we didn't get to, it would have been great if we could have actually tested how far we came against C9 or, yeah, or Immortals, but so a little disappointing that we didn't get to quite see our growth or quite. What the f is that name, bro? Lionel Fander? 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 The f is that name? Get where we I can say with confidence, I've never seen that name before. It's a B. Uh, I'm overall glad that I did get to play with Liquid, but I, I do wish it went differently and like situations were different. And I just, yeah, I, I can't even imagine like what the Team Liquid fans feel because of all the messes that's been happening. And I just want to say like, sorry for my performance and- And you'll never see me again. Get a chance to prove myself again. Pretty much just learn how to be more involved. You'll never see me again. This was a fucking horrible experience. You guys ruined my life. I am ashamed to have been here. In like the direction that, you know, team has to go in. Like, I, I just need to be more involved. I have to work harder. And that's kind of just the lesson that I got. If you want to have good control over your own destiny, you need to actually give a shit. And I'm doing better than ever. So I'm like really glad and I respect the organization a lot and they've done a lot for me so i can't really say anything bad about them they've done more than good for me so my first moment is when figure going theory i should say i'm retired too because i feel like no hope anymore so that will be changes something i don't know i just want to play with who can be reigning and who can be talk and who can be laning uh, Wait, did he yeah, say winning or laning? I heard laning. Hold on. What? Can be laning and who can be talk and who can be uh, practicing. Yeah, that's sure. I would take the individual happiness of one of my players to take like sixth place in a split and have the entirety of li liquid fans and the entirety of the reddit community just trash an organization i'm fine with that because i don't have a professional relationship with reddit i don't have a professional relationship with team liquid fans i have a professional relationship and genuine care for the individuals that i interact with on a daily basis so i made myself into the person i am because i worked my ass off and i had values that i've stuck to for all of my life we came to agreement on how much we'll be spending, how much structure is going to be implemented, how many resources are going to be poured into our LCS team's performance. And we are all very excited about that. The biggest thing will be that they're going to do everything that they can on the management side, and we're going to do everything that we can to perform. The roster that we're potentially looking at is something that will be very exciting. Dick fan, that's I the homie. I honestly believe that we will be a championship contending team next year. I'm ready to lead that. Yeah, I would, I would always get a Japanese curry with Nick Fan. That's what we would do. We just go talk about life, get some Japanese curry, and just like, you know, every couple months, just, you know, go hang out. That type of shit. Now he's a GM of FlyQuest. What's up, dude? Can you flame me? <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> you flame me? Go ahead and pop the red just me. That's my champ. That's my champ. Three, three, zero, three, four, eight, nine. My biggest regret uh, in my career so far was how I how I acted towards and tr how I treated Piglet, where like. I mean, I, I saw him as like my older brother and he looked out for me all the time and tried to make me the best player that I could be. I tried extremely hard to get him to his first NA Finals and tried to make him an NA LCS champion like he always hey, wanted too, to, brother. no matter how bittersweet it would have been if he finally got his goal and, you know, he would have left after NA LCS champion and went, went off to play in Korea or whatever. Like, I wanted that for him. And I, I just, it, it's really, it, it's an awful feeling because everyone depicts us as, as enemies and I really want nothing more than to prove them all wrong and 
to be his friend again and to be his teammate again and, and help him win. And yeah, it just feels awful because I feel like I, I let him down. I let the orb down by, uh, you know, mistreating him after I made promises to, to f change my ways and be more respectful of him and Loco. Dude, that's got to be the best esports documentary ever made.